could save a lot. After being the doctors, we're seeing him because he was king. I would request for all, my lord, to kindly give everyone some time. So that's all. Then we should not. But no, no, no repetition now. After the main arguments are done by the first two or three council, I think that will be. Oh, I thought. But we won't take. We won't. Oh, I think. But, my lord, there, there is only one. Our lord, you came with different petitions, came with Others different scopes, came with different areas. One point, which is what we've told the other side. One point we have told you. True. Therefore, had, we will not permit you to go here and there. No, certainly not. We won't, had, you know, we won't minute, repeat. Of, Anand, having had the benefit of yesterday's deliberations, my lord, my note is confined to your lordship's queries yesterday, plus the objections in the counter and the additional counter by them, and a bit of international jurisprudence, my lord, and here in, a, in a return. Whatever jurisprudence you do. At the appropriate time, uh, call Sir, point and you, me, can you can tender it in writing. We'll, we'll read it. But we will tender it in writing, but we won't repeat anything, my lord. All right, what I'm saying is. Right. Fair enough. That's all right. We are, we're not the sorts who will say that, look, now we're going to close shop and, you know, that, uh, no, no, uh, yeah. please go away. On the line last line. Never yeah, does yeah. in any way. The writer's side, the chief is far more liberal. I'm sorry, my chief is, I can see the chief is far more liberal in giving time. Yes, sir. Chief never shut out. Therefore, uh, uh, I'm trying to assist the chief justice on this bench. <laughs> no, this is everybody will adhere to very limited period of time and stick to the point. Point, point and not repeating. And not repeating. And not, not repeating. Prior written note. No, don't, All right. Don't Let's get started. Before, before, my lord, the the petition, note, yeah. lord, before the petitioner starts, an yes. lord, uh, there is something which I need to place on record, my lord. Okay. Your lordships need not read. I have given the copies yesterday to the other side. What is it? What it is, is my lord, in continuation of my request, that states be heard. Lord, page 5, directly your lordships may come. The laws, the Union of India has written letters to all chief secretaries that this is a matter with, my lord, may I read that uh, only? So they are, now you have told them that this matter is going on. The yeah. matter is going on. There are... Uh, That's excellent. So that now, you know, it's not that the states are unaware. You have informed uh, them that if so, somebody has Lord, to say something, they'll... Uh, that would not, my Lord, dilute my request that states should be issued notices. That's all I am, my Lord, making it clear. For that. So let me deal with that argument first before I go forward. No, not at all, please. We have we have a council on our legs. Please, no, no, not at all. Yes, Mr. Rodgi, no. Yes, my Lord, I just want to deal with this argument of the state business. My Lord, I am challenging, my Lord, a central law. Merely because, my lord, it happens to be in the concurrent list, there is no rationale to say, my lord, that this petition will be bad for non-joinder of states, my lord, because it happens to be in the concurrent list. My lord, your lordship sees entry 5 as an example. Entry 8, my lord, is insolvency. Insolvency was challenged, my lord, in Swiss Ribbons, in this court. There was no question, my lord, of saying that barely because it happens to be in the concurrent list, but you challenge the central list, therefore the petition won't lie. You know, unless everybody... You need not labor the absolutely point. Absolutely wrong. If the state favors no, the law... One second. Lord, absolutely wrong as a lordship. You have to second. You have to hear that entity... Whoever wants to law, come is welcome. Law is court, Lord, your lordship Whoever wants to say no. Yes. So really did not call upon you to even... <laughs> and, and I only want to comment on one thing. The letter is addressed of yesterday. The Lordship issued notice five months ago. I mean, if you had somebody, you could have issued a letter earlier. All right. Yes, Mr. Uh, completely to unnecessary to, to show yes, on this to the court. So yesterday we were looking at uh, uh, we, we looked at now page. We were on para 470. Yeah. No, my Lord, your Lordship asked me to show 469. Yes. So I'll come back to 469 at page 235 of the report. Four sixty nine. I had read four sixty eight, my lord. I will start with four sixty nine. Citizens of a democracy cannot be compelled to have their lives pushed into. Uh, Mr. Radhi, just one second. Give us PDF page. PDF. <laughs> lord, 1048. 1048. PDF will be one zero four eight, my lord. Compilation page is one zero one seven. And the reports page is 235. 1048. Compilation is? Which compilation is this? Volume? Compilation 1. Compilation 1, my lord. Compilation 4. Compilation 4, volume 1. 4 is all the judgments. 
four is foreign judge foreign judge four is foreign judge in that process to this volume 1 one. volume 1 all the professor swami and other etc i was yeah. reading from that yesterday milot no we just lost track mm -hmm. yeah 10 okay. Your worship, sir. Four sixty-nine. Does does his call have it, my lord? Yeah. Sure. Little improvement. Uh, my lord, let me start with respect from four sixty-eight, my lord. The contextually four sixty-eight. We got encouraged by your worship, my lord. Efforts, my lord. Thanks, Mr. Dwedi. I hope you are also working on your iPad. Encouraged. I thought I'll I'll four sixty-eight. He is persuaded to do. I'll try to persuade my not my colleague. The exercise of the natural and inalienable right to privacy entails allowing an individual the right to a self-determined sexual orientation. Thus, it is imperative to widen the scope of the right to privacy to incorporate a right to sexual privacy to protect the rights of sexual minorities. emanating from the inalienable right to privacy the right to sexual privacy must be granted it's important now the sanctity of a natural right and be protected under the constitution as fundamental to liberty and as a soul mate of dignity so my right now my lord is cast in stone by first the nine judges and this and if i may say so my lord in retrospect i was thinking in some measure we are revisiting this issue though this issue is decided so my lord that's why i said my lord when we want request a declaration from my lordships the declaration should not only be a badge that i wear a badge by saying that the supreme court has given me the right to say that i am married but my lord it must at least go forward even in some limited extent not my lord the entire panoply of all the laws but at least my lord in those laws which are otherwise secular and we do not touch my lord personal laws there that right has to flow and give me something real i have made a list of four or five items my lord as an example take my lord payment of gratuity act other acts we provide pension they provide my lord only to a spouse where the underlying thing that you are married i am going to give you my lord some of them one of them my lord is the hold on i will give you my lord one of them is <laughs> judges pension the judge's pension will go to a spouse now a spouse presupposes that you have to be married so if one of us milord becomes a judge and then he gets a pension tomorrow an issue will arise whether you are going to, who will get that the pension milord for example under the income tax act a gift is exempt from tax milord as between members of a spouse which predetermines not a marriage now if you are going to do that how will that work milord so there are large number of acts so the secular acts fair milord this issue doesn't arise of milord uh, uh, personal laws so the effect or declaration of marriage must flow to get us real rights where milord these day to day things at least in secular parts are milord involved motor vehicles act gratuity act pension act milord milord juvenile justice act provides for milord Uh, adoption says you can't adopt as a living you can't adopt unless you are married so all those below those at least it must flow otherwise what will happen i get a i'm sorry to use the phrase i get a declaration i get a badge five years got five years ago i got that there will be no criminalization after five years i get this badge then below when i go somewhere again those problems arise they say no supreme court hasn't give you anything given you a badge of being married fine in society you can go around and say i am a couple who's married but what is the real impact on the ground therefore my lord i have framed one or two reliefs which i'll indicate i'm only saying my lord idea should not be to go on revisiting 
the same issue from Puttu Swami and Navtej, back and forth, back and forth. And we should only, at the end, if your lordships give me some you know, the declarations, as and when in some other issues, something has to be fleshed out, it will come back to court. Nobody can you know, think of impossible. Winning those litigations. Yes. Mentally as required. Yes. So rather than going at, going at it whole hog. Yes. Whole hog you feel is a problem. Yes. Why is it a problem? No, no, no. I, I am not saying it's a problem. No, you don't want to, because you don't want to open up the other fronts right now. You feel what is the reason? You feel it's a distraction. He says, yeah, no. no, but I'm only saying only personal laws. I'm only. I'm only saying. There is an organic hole in this. Yes. That's one point is. Yes. Get a declaration, then you say that in some of these, what you term as secular. Or I, I term them as secular, non personal. So far, so good. Yes. But when it comes to personal law, this will also implicate personal law, isn't it? Because some of your. Some of them country. will argue, Milad. Yes. Menka now, wants to argue. Therefore, uh, therefore you don't want to. All right. You may not argue. You, you, you have strategic reasons why you will not argue. But this court will have to engage itself once more, twice more, maybe three times or four times more. Yes, absolutely right. Which one of these? Should not have. The question is then we are not looking at it as a whole. We have to look at it. We are looking at it in a truncated manner, which means that we, per force, for the sake of, let's say, convenience or clarity, we say that we confine this declaration or whatever relief you are seeking to the Special Marriage Act, right? Which means that others who do not wish to or are not aware of this form of marriage, and I use these words very carefully, who are not aware of this form of marriage, of this going to the, uh, going through the civil form of marriage, we can't presuppose, we can't assume that everyone knows this. They are denied this, right? Either they choose their religion or whatever, if they choose to, then they are out of this. So that is one aspect. That is Second one. aspect is they intersect with personal law even here. So keep that in mind when you make this. Yes, 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 yes. I'll tell later. Yes, I, I appreciate Mr. Lord, Lordship's comment. So now 469. Citizens of a democracy cannot be compelled to have their lives pushed into obscurity by an oppressive colonial legislation in order to ensure the sexual and gender minorities' fulfillment of their fundamental right, it is impediment to imperative to confront the closet and as a necessary consequence confront compulsory heterosexuality. Confronting the closet will entail reclaiming markers of all desires, identities and acts to be challenged. It also entail ensuring that individuals belonging to sexual minorities have the freedom to fully participate in public life, breaking the invisible barrier that heterosexuality imposes upon them. The choice of sexuality is at the core of privacy, but equally our constitutional jurisprudence must recognize that public assertion of identity found in sexual orientation is crucial to the exercise of freedom. But I submit 469 will fully apply and instead of the words colonial legislation, we can use blood the words colonial mindset. It is that mindset, Milord, which started from then. Society has evolved. Your lordships, Milord, struck down the barrier five years ago. But some parts of that mindset remain, which is evident from the stand of the respondents, including that of the states. And this mindset is, Milord, is implicit in the ground or at the ground level whenever we go to public spaces and in the so-called milord the secular laws which i'm mentioning which also will have to be read in accord with the declaration if a lordship so grant the declaration in other words in other words i will propose at the end but i will just preface milord wherever husband and wife is used make it gender neutral by using spouse Wherever, my lord, man and woman is used, make it gender specific, gender neutral by saying, my lord, person. And I will give you lordship examples in the Special Marriage Act itself. So kindly, my lord, note this. 
husband and wife should be used as spouse and man and woman should be used as person. A large part of this, my Lord, will solve our projected interpretation, my Lord, of the special marriage act. And what is good here must also apply across, my Lord, the spectrum, at least of the acts, my Lord, the examples of which I'm talking about. So that's why I said, my Lord, 469 will fully apply by removing legislation into a mindset which is evident even today. Then, my Lord, in Lordship terms, 471. 471 talked about reputable and dis disreputable sex. Kindly see, my Lord, the last line of that page. If one accepts the proposition that public places are heteronormative and the same sex sexual acts partially closeted, relegating homosexual acts into the private sphere would in effect reiterate the ambient heterosexism of the public space. Which means, my Lord, in other words, the rule of majority in public spaces. It must be acknowledged that members belonging to sexual minorities are often subjected to harassment in public spaces. The right to sexual privacy, founded on the right of autonomy of a free individual, must capture the right of persons of the community to navigate public places on their own terms, free from state interference. What I am really requesting, will add, for a declaration of marriage is really a paraphrasing of this. When I walk into a public space, I walk into the public space with my partner, knowing that the law in the state recognizes this union as a marriage. Nobody will raise a finger of stigma against me. I walk into this public space. I walk into my Lord, public employment. I walk into private employment. I walk in my Lord, uh, for pensions, gratuities, etc. That I am equal to the heterosexual group. And it's not that the heterosexual groups will add uh, uh, wishes or desires or their orientation is one which is correct and all others will add are incorrect in the same phrase as reputable and disreputable in 471. Mm -hmm. This was negative, but it will not be interesting. So this, this started with will add the negative part positive. that you won't do this. I am saying let there be a positive affirmation of the fact that since we are equal, created by judgments of this court from Putto Swami downwards, from Nalsa downwards. If we are equal, Milad, require an affirmative, Milad, nod from the court that you are equal, marriage will be equal, walking into public spaces, public employment, private employment will be equal. There will be no stigma. You will not be treated as lesser mortals, as was being suggested yesterday by one of them. And therefore, there will be full enjoyment of the right to life, dignified privacy in my own house, in public spaces, in public employments. That is what, my Lord, that is the adversity which we are facing today. I am only trying to paraphrase the adversity which we are facing today. You go to a school, you, you write, my Lord, parents, names, passports, all those things, my Lord, create issues. All those things create issues. Because that's how, my Lord, the concept has been. But concepts have evolved. We are not in the same position. I don't blame the 54 Act. My Lord, when it was framed, that's how it was. But from 54 till today, my Lord, we are 75 years down. Okay, you see what uh, Adha Bhatt said. There will be moments, there will be incremental. Yes, moments. I agree. They will take time. One fine day, everything cannot change. That must be kept in mind. I know, but my Lord, some amount but of real... Once, if you succeed, and the status of a marriage is recognized, um, and if somebody doesn't follow that status of the marriage in another thing, then it's a... It's a I would say it's a violation of the order of the court if we agree with you. Yes. If that is the position, then certain other changes will take some... I have no doubt. Step at more time. Milad, I entirely agree. 
I entirely agree. But it should not be, I, I am at the absolute threshold. I am saying it should not be only, my lord, with that declaration that I go away. I should get some real benefit, don't call it benefit, some real filtering down you, of the effect of the order of this court. If you succeed, and it is held that under the Special Marriage Act, yeah. this is a marriage which can be registered, that itself the registration is what you get. I appreciate, but Lord, in several acts, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, Milad, it's like saying that consequential effect will follow. It will. Something like that, Milad. If I may show, Milad, I have tried to frame, give copies. There may be... Uh, I have tried to frame in my own words. You are saying that the consequences of registration of the marriage yeah, yes, in different scenarios will arise. Yes, yes, yes. Arise. But, but just kindly see, Milad, I have tried to frame it subject to lots of pleasure, if I succeed, then I may get something like this. ...are entitled to marry under the Special Marriage Act, regardless of their gender, identity and sexual orientation. This is the main declaration. The court may be pleased to direct that the marriage will be solemnized under the provisions of the Act. This is an adjunct of item 1. The words So the first three. Yes, yes. But Milord, I am more interested in four. Have a look at four. I said four is a consequence of us. Yeah, Milord, one, two and three are really, Milord, paraphrasing the same thing. See, four. This I respectfully submit, Milord, subject to your Lord's pleasure. The court may be pleased to direct that all laws where rights, duties, obligations, and privileges flowing from marriage are conferred to a heterosexual couple married under the... Sorry. Same thing. But you are saying that you want a specific... Uh, explicit. Explicit declaration. So explicit, my Lord. Uh, according to you, the area of litigation should not be so wide that it creates a problem. My Lord. And though you are confining to the special marriage, yes, you are saying whatever the consequences yes. of registration yes. Are, yes. must be available. Elsewhere. I am very grateful. Lord, we spend a lot of time in very carefully drafting, right. Lord, within the contours. Because it should be explicit, Lord. Otherwise, every time, Lord, you start somewhere, you come up to the Supreme Court, five, seven years go by, our lives are in any case passing by, you know, Lord, it becomes very difficult. I am not saying, Lord, that this struggle will end today. It can't end. But when we, if we succeed, we should get an explicit declaration in terms of four or as modulated by your Lord Sri Prasad, which flows from one. Then, my Lord, Mr. Rathi, perhaps you may want to look at para four, uh, four uh, seventy-eight and four eighty-two. Yes, I was going to. My Lord, I also wanted to read four seventy-two. Four seventy-two is very important. Very important because of the heading. We lot see deconstructing the heteronormative framework. I am again and again, my Lord, hitting this part because we are being buried under the pressure of the majority. Wherever we go, wherever we stand, wherever we apply, I am buried under that, my Lord. Oh, look, this is abnormal. What is normal is what is majority. But that is not the law, my Lord. That's a mindset. That is not the law, but that's a mindset which is troubling us, my Lord, in our daily lives. This is only an example to say public space is that. But that's what is troubling us, my Lord. Therefore, my Lord, the importance is deconstructing the heteronormative framework. This is what I'm driving at. In the absence of a protected zone of privacy, individuals are forced to conform to societal stereotypes. Puttu Swami has characterized the right to privacy as a shield against forced homogeneity and as an essential attribute to achieve personhood. So I have that shield. That shield must be made explicit that I will not, my Lord, be traumatized or stigmatized only because I don't conform to the heteronormative majority. Then, my Lord, 
after the quotation of Putu Swami towards Placid MF, this court has recognized the right of an individual to break free from the demands of society and the need to foster a plural and an inclusive culture. The judgment of four judges in Putu Swami said this. Kindly leave this note. Kindly come to 474 for a few words. The right to privacy enables an individual to exercise his or her autonomy away from the glare of societal expectation. The realization of human personality is dependent on the autonomy of an individual. In a liberal democracy, the recognition of the individual is an autonomous person. It is an acknowledgement of the state's respect for the capacity of the individual to make independent choices. The right to privacy must be construed to signify that not only are certain acts no longer immoral, immoral but there also exists an affirmative moral right to do them. I rely a lot on this part because the immoral part is now gone. So the, 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 the negative and the positive, that's how we have, our constitution also have affirmative Millard um, roles. Then Millard, there's a quotation by Richards, the Lord Shime then turn 478 Millard and 479. An individual sexuality cannot be put in boxes or compartmentalized. It should rather be viewed as fluid, granting the individual the freedom to ascertain his or her own desire and proclivities. The self-determination of sexual orientation is exercise of autonomy. Accepting the role of human sexuality is an independent force in the development of personhood. Acknowledgement of crucial role of sexual autonomy in the idea of free individual. Such an interpretative, interpretative of autonomy has implications for widening applications of human rights to sexuality. Sexuality cannot be construed as something the state has the prerogative. To. This is important. Let me read this right again. Sexuality cannot be construed as something that the state has the prerogative to legitimize only in the form of rigid marital procreational sex. This is exactly Lord, the argument of the other side. Biological man, biological woman, their union is marriage, marriage will lead to procreation. That is the order of nature and nothing more. That is exactly the argument even today. That's why I say, my Lord, in some ways we are revisiting it. Because apart from criminalization, I still face a lot of these problems. Sexuality must be construed as a fundamental experience through which individuals define the meaning of their lives. Human sexuality cannot be defined narrowly in terms of function as a means to procreation. So, my Lord, not the narrow or a pedantic view to confine it to close categories will result in denuding human liberty of its full content and a constitutional right. The constitution protects the fluidities of sexual experience. It leaves to consenting adults to find fulfillment in the relationship, diversity of culture, among plural ways of life, infinite shades of love and longing. By criminalizing consensual acts who wish to accept their right, state is denying us the right to intimacy. The right to intimacy emanates from the prerogative to engage in sexual rights, etc. Then, Milord Shakti Vahini. That's important. Lord, I will not read Shakti Vahini because Shakti Vahini is quoted here. But my Lord may note, my Lord, on the side, there are three judgments Shakti Vahini, Shafin Jaha, Lakshmi. And Deepika. I'll repeat, Milad. Shakti Vahini, Shafin Jaha, Lakshmi, and Deepika. These are four judgments which lay down and reiterate one principle that every person is entitled to marry a person of his or her own choice. If it applies Pilot, to the heterosexual group or majority, I respectfully submit it will apply equally, my Lord, to us. We may be a minuscule minority, but having the same rights are entitled to the same declaration granted, my Lord, by this court in these four cases. Then, my Lord, 480. In Shakti Vahini, a three judge bench of this court issued a directive. To prevent honor killing the behest of Khap Panchayat and protect persons who entered into marriage that did not have approval of Panchayat. So, Panchayat can be Panchayat, community, whatever you call it. The court recognized the right to choose a life partner as a fundamental right. The learned Chief Justice held. 
when two adults consensually choose each other as life partners, it is a manifestation of the choice which is recognized in Article 1921. Such a right as a sanction of constitutional law. Once it is recognized, the right needs to be protected, cannot succumb to the conception of class honor or group. Then we got 481, Shafin Jahan. Shafin Jahan, this court set aside a Kerala High Court judgment which annulled the marriage of a 24 year old woman, the man of her choice, in a habeas corpus instituted by the father. The court upheld the right to choose the life partner. The Chief Justice held expression of choice in accord with law is an acceptance of individual identity, curtailment of that expression and ultimate action emanating therefrom, or the conceptual structural of obeisance to society will destroy individualistic entity. The social values and morals have their space and are not about constitutional guarantee. One of us, Tandachut J, recognize the right to choose a partner the important facet. The choice of a partner, whether within or outside marriage, lies within the exclusive domain of its individual intimacies of marriage, lie within a core zone of privacy, which is inviolable. You know, I want to repeat this line. Intimacies of marriage lie within a core zone of privacy, which is inviolable. The absolute right of the individual to lose a life partner is not in the least affected by matters of faith. Social approval for intimate personal decisions is not the basis. So majority is not the basis. It is my right. If it is the right, my lord, of the heterosexual group, I would respectfully submit it is jolly well, my lord, our right because we are, my lord, equal human beings entitled to the benefits of the constitution in the same manner as anybody else. Then, my lord, the judgment in Shafin Jaha delineated a space where an individual enjoys the autonomy of making intimate personal decisions. The strength of the constitution, therefore, lies in the guarantee which it affords that each individual will have a protected entitlement in being a partner, choice of partner, share intimacy within or outside marriage. We are talking, my lord, of within today, outside, my lord, in any case is available. In furtherance of the Rawlesian notion of self-respect, your lordship may see, my lord, last four lines of this para. Just above platters of G. This institutionalized expression to love must be considered as an important element in the full actualization of the ideal of self respect. Social institutions must be arranged in such a manner that individuals have the freedom to enter relations untrammeled by the binary of sex and gender and receive requisite institutional recognition to perfect their relations. Therefore, my lord, when I say, I request for a declaration that we are married, we have to be married under this act and the state will recognize and register. That, my lord, will be requisite institutional recognition which will, my lord, follow from the court's declaration of the law under Article 141 and include, my lord, their acceptance which will be followed by the acceptance of society. Without society accepts what the law is. Sometimes the law takes a lead. And I gave you Lordship the example of Hindu widows right to remarry act, which came in the 1800s. There's law acted with alacrity. The society was not ready. Not ready, Milord, even till early 1900s. Widows remarried. There the law acted with alacrity. Here, here we need, my lord, to push the society, push the society to acknowledge us as equals in all respects because the constitution says so and the moral authority of this court, it is not only legal authority, my lord, this court enjoys moral authority. It enjoys public confidence. Judgments of the court and the wisdom and the, the, the prestige of the court depends on public confidence. The public has confidence in the court. Not, it's not a case where the public has no confidence, but they are bound to follow only because Mirad, there is a decree of the court. The decrees will be violated by people if people don't have confidence. So, Mirad, we rely on the prestige and the moral authority of this court, apart from Article 141, that when the highest court of the land has said 
that there will be no 377, that you will have a right to marry, that there will be no discrimination in public places. It is that with great respect, my Lord. Whether Parliament follows it up with the law or doesn't follow it up with the law, that is what will drive the society in times to come, two years or five years, whatever it be, to accept this, this group as a fully homogeneous group with their differences and diversities within one whole. As Justice Bhatt used the phrase, not one whole. That's how, my Lord, that's what we are looking at. You know, my friend is right in saying, our parents have by and large accepted us. We are outside the closet. So we have gone through the process with our parents already, who belong to an earlier generation, to whom it was not the norm as we understand because the closet was not opened 50 years ago. They have accepted. They want them to settle. They want them to have a family. They want them to have the same recognition, my Lord. They don't want them to be ostracized. That the children are ostracized and the parents are ostracized. Oh, you have children who are not normal. So the ostracism will reach there also. It may reach their close friends. All that, my Lord, has to be wiped out. If the constitutional goal of the preamble as reiterated by this court in Nalsa, Puttu Swami and Navtej Milord have to be given full effect. These petitioners, their parents... Milord, in my case, the first case, the ceremony was conducted by the parents, Milord, 10 years ago. So they also, Milord, went through some kind of a, a, a transformation or whatever you may call it. By more people. Yes. Yes. And they had a reception in their home. They had a reception. In the town. They had a reception. Some, some people, Milord, I have read, because you can't get married here, they go abroad and get married. Get a certificate from there. So there are all kinds of, Milord, situations. Small town. Yes, yeah, this was a small hometown. Yes. Then, Milord. Now, my Lord, something very important. Kindly turn, my Lord, to para 553. There is, my Lord, in Justice Chandrachur's opinion, a huge discussion of foreign cases. But para 553 is, my Lord, US versus Windsor relating to DOMA, which I had given in their chart. So that description is yes. here, my Lord. It's important to read that. Uh, only one more thing, my lord. Mr. Kirpal tells me just above 551, there is a reference to Nepal, my lord. Yes. There is a reference to Nepal just above para 551. What is that? Sunil, some Sunil. Yes. Sunil Babu Panth. Sunil. Just above para 551. 550. 550. Hmm. Lord, we'll get this translation tomorrow. A judgment was... Fine. After this, another... After this Lord, another thing has come yesterday. Two weeks ago. Or two weeks ago. We are going to translate it and, Lord, try and give it Nepal to your... Nepal Supreme Court. Right? Yes, Lord. Yes. Which para? Five? Five zero. Uh, I was reading, Lord, two lines above 551. In concluding, the court directed the Nepalese government to enact new legislation or amend legislation to ensure that persons of all sexual orientations and identities could enjoy equal rights. So now there is a fresh judgment reiterating this position and we will translate and give it to Lord Shibs tomorrow or day after. Uh, so it's not a case of urban elitism. Say from Nepal, not, certainly not urban elite. Now say 553. In 2000... 13, in the U.S. versus Windsor, the U.S. Supreme Court considered the constitutionality of Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, 
which states that for the purpose of federal law, the word marriage and spouse refer to legal unions between a man and a woman. Windsor, who had inherited the estate of her same-sex partner, was barred from claiming federal estate tax exemption for surviving spouse since the marriage was not recognized. Kennedy J., writing for the majority, held that restricting the federal interpretation of marriage and spouse to apply only to opposite sex union was unconstitutional under the due process of the Fifth Amendment. In the DOMA, it's DOMA's unusual deviation from the tradition of recognizing and accepting state definitions of marriage operate to deprive same-sex couples of the benefit and responsibility that come with federal recognition. It's exactly what I seek, my lord. I respectfully submit, my lord. It is exactly what I seek from your lordship, my lord. This is strong evidence of a law having purpose and effect of disapproval of a class recognized and protected by state. DOMA is about purpose and practical effect are to impose a disadvantage, a separate status, so a stigma upon all who enter into same-sex marriage made lawful by the unquestioned authority of the states. So the laws of the states of the U.S. was at variance with DOMA. That you also find in my chart also. Then 554, my lord. Obergefell. Two years later in Obergefell, while analyzing precedent of decisions of U.S. courts recognizing same-sex marriage, Kennedy J. observed, a first premise of the court's relevant precedent is that the right to personal choice regarding marriage is inherent in the concept of individual <clears throat> autonomy, like choices concerning contraception, family relationship, procreation, child rearing, all of which are protected by the Constitution. Decisions concerning marriage are among the most intimate that an individual can make. Kennedy J. expressed the need to go beyond the narrow holding in Lawrence, this is the Lawrence, Texas case, ma, towards a more expensive view in Obergefell. Lawrence invalidated laws that made same-sex intimacy a criminal act. But while Lawrence confirmed a dimension of freedom that allows individuals to engage in intimate association without criminal act, it does not follow that freedom stops there. Outlaw to outcast may be a step forward, but does not achieve the full promise of liberty. This is exactly, my lord, history repeating itself here. Your lordships have, my lord, annulled 377 as it was annulled in the case of Lawrence. But it can't stop there. It has to go forward. It has to go forward, my lord, with a declaration that we are entitled to the same rights of marriage as anybody else. So that we can walk, my lord, in public spaces. Now, my lord, yes. Now, then, my lord, next passage is very important. By a 5 is to 4 majority, the Supreme Court ruled that the fundamental right to marry is guaranteed to the same-sex couple by the due process and the equal protection clause of the 14th Amendment. Commenting on the right to marriage, Kennedy J. noted, not this definition is classic. No union is more profound than marriage, for it embodies the highest ideals of love, fidelity, devotion, sacrifice and family. It would misunderstand these men and women to say they disrespect the idea of marriage. They are pleased that they do respect it, respect it so deeply that they seek to find its fulfillment for themselves. Their hope is not to be condemned to live in loneliness, excluded from one's civilization's oldest institutions, namely marriage, my lord. They ask for equal dignities in the eyes of the law. The constitution grants them that right. So, my lord, if this is good for society as a whole, it has to be good for us. It has to be good for us. And there is no reason that we should not be included in the whole. We should not be included in the whole or the wholesome, my lord, group of society. My Lord, now, my Lord, the principles at para 561, that is, my Lord, the crux. The principles, and then one or two more passages, and we are done with this. Kindly turn to para 561, my Lord. Two pages down. From an analysis of comparative jurisprudence from across the world, the following principles emerge. Sexual orientation is an intrinsic element of liberty, dignity, privacy, individual autonomy, and equality. Intimacy between consenting adults is beyond the legitimate interest of the state. 
Then we got point five. Uh, point four. When to read all that? Yeah, I'll read all of them. Yes, I'm grateful. <clears throat> 561.2 Intimacy between consenting adults of the same sex is beyond the legitimate interest of the state. Sodomy, law, sodomy laws violate equality by targeting a section of the population for their sexual orientation. Such a law perpetrates stereotype, lends authority of the state to societal stereotypes and has a chilling effect on the exercise of freedom. The right to love and to a partner to find fulfillment in a same-sex relation is essential to a society which believes in freedom under a constitutional order based on rights. Sexual orientation implicates negative and positive obligations on the state, not only requires the state not to discriminate, but calls for the state to recognize rights which bring to fulfillment. This is the affirmative part, my lord. The earlier part was the negative part or the negative injunction. The constitutional principles which have led to decriminalization must constant, continuously engage in a rights discourse to ensure that the same-sex relationship find true fulfillment in every facet of life. You know, I pause here for a minute. This is what I'm driving at. I require beyond the badge. I require this, you know, I respectfully submit. Beyond the badge that I'm married. Every facet of life where we face pitfalls when we go outside, my lord, the courtroom and deal with, my lord, ordin like ordinary mortals. This is what we, my lord, face. The law cannot discriminate against same-sex relationship. It must also take positive steps. This is the affirmative part. The state should rather, my lord, come forward and, and say, all right, we accept gracefully, not grudgingly. That the solicitor referred to the affidavit filed in Naptej. We were in Naptej. The affidavit said we leave it to the court. But the court commented on it in Naptej. That we wish that you should have taken a stand in just leaving it on our shoulders. So it's not a matter of grace that the court said there, oh, we leave it to you. That's what the comment is in Naptej. Now, we got 4, 564. This evolution has enabled societies governed by liberal constitutional values such as liberty, dignity, and privacy, equality, and individual autonomy to move beyond decriminalization of offenses involving consensual same-sex relations. Decriminalization is, of course, necessary to bury the ghost of morality, which flourished in a radically different age and time. I submit, my lord, history is repeating itself. This was only five years ago. But decriminalization is a first step. Please mark this, my lord. Kindly read, my lord, the conclusions with this. If this is the first step, the affirmative steps remain. And I submit, my lord, that the prayers that I respectfully seek from your lordships are affirmative steps which will help me lead a dignified life like any other person. Then, my lord, uh, then, your Lordship may see only one more. But the last four lines of the Constitution, yes, Lord, I'll constitution read principle. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Lord, I should have read those. 564. What were they reading? After the first step, the constitutional principles on which it is based have application to a broader range of entitlements. The Indian Constitution is based on the abiding faith in the constitutional values. In the march of civilizations across spectrum of compassion and global order, India cannot be left behind. We have to at least go hand in hand with Nepal. Let's forget anything else. We are in this region. Let's not talk about the America. In the US also, a large part of the society is very conservative. Large part. That's why, my lord, you add this. Doma and this, that. And the fact that now in the recent past, they have gone back, my lord, on uh, abortions. They have gone back on ab abortions. It's not as if that, my lord, they're, they're being a industrial, uh, industrialized country, they're, they're very much ahead. The entire South, the rednecks, as they call themselves, my lord, they, are, they are conservative. After Robert fell, there is... So after Robert fell, it has been accepted. And they have passed an act now. I mentioned that. Opinion changes. So things change. 
when the moral authority of an institution says that this is how please you look through this prism of gender neutrality do not look through the prism Milad, sorry to go back this victorian morality issue Milad, came in 1800s when Milad, mr macaulay framed this law you go back to indian text for hundreds of years Milad, you go to khajura go to other places you see Milad, uh, these acts are depicted on the walls for thousands of years. That remained below the concept of morality. It was not below this uh, Victorian morality which was in India for 1000 years. Our morality was very, very different, far more advanced, not Victorian, not stereotype, not stigmatized in this form, not below this formal thing. You, go, you, you can go to so many places and see. But when below it changed, we have had a succession from Milord Lodi dynasty. Lodi Gardens Milord dynasty, thousand years old. Then came Milord the Mughal dynasty in the 1500s when Babur came. Then came the British. They occupied India. They imposed Milord their, their code and their moralities. So the society has traveled Milord through, I mean, Milord twisting, if I may say so, twisting sands of time. What we were thousands of years ago, what we were, my lord, in the Mughal period, what we were, my lord, in the British period, and that British period stuck because they made the laws. They conquered India. India became one, my lord, dominion, like Africa, like many other dominions. We became a dominion, and those laws were imposed on us. Those Victorian models, morals were imposed. I am not on a debate, Milord, what is right, what is wrong. But that is how the shifting sands of time have, Milord, gone over thousands of years. That's why these words are important. That in the march, Milord, in this march, India can't be left behind. And more so, Milord, at least we don't have a debate like England. They don't have, Milord, a written constitution. So it's a matter of debate what, what the conventions are or what they are not. We have a written constitution like the US. Our constitution is very, very clear. And this, my lord, golden thread, thread, if I may use again, my lord, the preamble 14, 15, 16, 19, and 21 is now cast in stone by several judgments of this court on secularism, pluralism, Constitutional morality, no right, my lord, of the heterogeneous majority to steamroll the minority. And in the recent past, we start from Nalsa. I can go back, my lord, to a large number of judgments. But then that debate, my lord, will unnecessarily go on. We don't need that because there is no discordant note. Wherever there was a discordant note, my lord, your lordships have corrected. MP Sharma had a discordant note. And MP Sharma is of the 50s and 60s, my lord. The lordships have corrected. My lord, the Chief Justice, my lord, also corrected. ADM Jabalpur. It's a discordant note. One discordant note, MP Sharma, another discordant note. They have been corrected by this court. So, my lord, this court has proceeded in the last 70 years, by and large, on one track, upholding the values of the Constitution. Talking about constitutional morality, talking about the fact that if one man, my lord, is discriminated, he can come to the Supreme Court, notwithstanding that, my lord, hundreds and crores stand one way. One man has the right to come to this court and he need not wait for parliament because this court is the guarantor, my lord, and the protector of fundamental rights. The lordship has said repeatedly, repeatedly, I mean, you don't need to cite cases of that. So if that is, my lord, the position and India has to go forward, this court takes the lead with this moral authority and legal authority in providing a declaration saying that this is the next step after 377. Look, Mr. Society, this is the norm. Follow this norm. Remove the dogma. Remove the stigma. That is why, my lord, your lordship said, give wide publicity. That's not normally, your lordship, don't say that normally. The reason is, you are dealing, my lord, with something which is a little little out of the normal. It's not, my lord, a case of property or, my lord, money going here or something. It's not one of those cases. It's a very different case. 
So the obligations will not rest heavily on this court because of its moral authority and the public confidence in the court more than Milord the legal part. Now Milord para 600 is very important. Kindly turn to para 600 and 601 and then Milord uh, two three more paras then we are done. And the last para of Justice Hindu Malhotra, which I will read, Milad, that we owe an apology, etc. But Milad, para 600. <laughs> Constitutional morality requires in a democracy the assurance of certain minimum rights, which are essential for free existence to every member of society. The preamble to the Constitution rec recognizes these rights and liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship and equality of status, of opportunity. Constitutional morality is the guarantee which seeks that all inequality is eliminated from social structure. And each individual is assured of the means for reference the rights guaranteed. Constitutional morality leans towards making Indian democracy vibrant by infusing a system of brotherhood. That is, Milad, your lordships are now talking about fraternity. This brotherhood takes you back to the principle and phrase fraternity, Milad, in the preamble. Brotherhood comes from fraternity. There is no other phrase of brotherhood in the constitution. You also may only note, fraternity comes, Milad, fraternity and brotherhood is the meaning of one or the other and is relatable to the constitution. Class, race, had, uh, or brotherhood among a heterogeneous population, belonging to different classes, races, religion, culture, caste, and section. Constitutional morality cannot, however, be nurtured unless as recognized by the preamble. So, we had emphasis on the preamble, which became a part, we had, was declared as a part of the constitution. There exists fraternity which assures and maintains the dignity of each of you. Then we let Dr. Ambedkar's decision fraternity. Kindly turn to 601. And as I said, Milad, when the Hindu code came in 1950, parliament was not ready. The Hindu code, Milad, was not only Hindu marriage act. It had adoption, success, so many things, Milad. So, Milad, it was not accepted. And Dr. Ambedkar had to resign. Then it came, Milord, in a truncated form. First, Milord, this uh, uh, Hindu Marriage Act, then Succession Act, and the adoption, guardianship, all that, Milord, came separately, not as a part of the Hindu court bill. So the import is, what was not accepted in 1950 was accepted by Parliament in 56, 58, etc., when it went on. And then became the norm of society. Milad, nobody says today that there is some error in the in the Hindu Marriage Act. Prior to Milad, the Hindu Marriage Act, one could marry Milad three times. A Hindu could marry, have three wives. That became Milad in anathema when India progressed to the Hindu Marriage Act. That was the law prevailing from the times of the Mughals, the British. So we brought in a new social order. Sorry. This is the double-edged sword. Because then the argument of the other side is let the parliament do it. And it's all right, but society changes. You know, point is, point is, Milan. Sometimes, as I said, Milan, the law takes the lead. Huh. Sometimes society takes the lead. Mr. Rotiki, your broad argument there would be that we are talking of constitutional morality. When somebody right. performs it, that is also constitutional. That's right. I'm grateful. And Milan, the simple answer is this to this query being raised again and again. The power, jurisdiction, obligation, and responsibility of this court, which is cast on this court under the constitution, is only cast on this court. Even the high court doesn't have that power. Only this court, as the final protector of fundamental rights and the final arbiter of what the law is and what the constitution is. 32 is itself a fundamental right. If, my lord, I have a right and that right is not being, my lord, given its full play, is being clouded or shrouded in some form by the majority and, if I may say so, by the state accepting the majority as correct, I have a right to come to this court and this court will fail in its duty 
under the constitution if my lord it does not remedy my right say no i can't do anything you wait for parliament my lord there can't be a mandamus to parliament i have no voice in parliament I have a voice to come to the Lord, open the doors of this court and come here and plead before your lordships. None of us have a right to go anywhere else. Except to, oh, you are a representative in parliament, you go to your MLA, you tell your MLA, MLA will go there. That's not an answer, Miller, to the constitution. The constitutional touchstone only. I am grateful. That, that's, Miller, where it stands. And, Miller, this argument has been raised in other cases also. Oh, only 10 or 20 people are affected. Thousands have accepted. Take, my lord, some resolution or some decision of a government. Your lordships have always, my lord, struck down the argument. If one man is affected, he has a right to say that he is affected. If his grievance is valid, then the court will act on it. And that this 100, 200 business was one of the foundations, my lord, in Kaushal. Your lordship may note that. That judgment, my lord, which overruled Nas of this court, which was overruled in Aftej and Putu Swami, that judgment said, oh, you are a small minority, you are a piffling minority. Minuscule, and 200 prosecutions, what's a big deal? In a country of 100 crore, this is minuscule. So, 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 my lord, something like de minimis. Your lordships have a principle of de minimis. If it is so, my lord, inconsequential, the court may not act. Yeah. That judgment was founded, my lord, on de minimis. The point is, if one man's fundamental right, my lord, is affected, he has the right to come. And that judgment, therefore, was completely wrong in applying a principle of de minimis on the violation of a fundamental right. My lord, in Shafin Jahan, there is a passage, my lord, Chief Justice Chavichud, reminding the High Court that you cannot, my lord, uh, go with just, my lord, this majority. I said, Milord, I'll show that. No, all right. Let me read Ambedkar. Mr. Kirpal wants me to read. Milord, we almost got to read. Yeah. <laughs> Milord, para 600 at the bottom of that page. Yes. Man who faced discrimination himself. Yes, of course. Milord, your lordships are aware in London, wherever, Milord, famous people have lived, their names are, Milord, in a blue uh, a plaque. Uh, on a building that here lived, say, X or Y, and one of those houses is where Dr. Ambedkar lived, with that blue plaque. They give the, I mean, the period where so-and-so lived, whether it's a Churchill or whoever it was. That's what uh, Ambedkar. An ideal society should be mobile, should be full of channels for conveying a change taking place in one part to the other parts. In an ideal society, there should be many interests consciously communicated and shared. There should be varied and free points of contact with other modes of association. In other words, there must be social <coughs> endomosis. What does that mean? Endoosmosis. This is the fraternity, which is also another name for democracy. In his address, last address to the Constitutional Assembly, he defined the fraternity as a sense of common brotherhood of all Indians, as in the social and economic plane, Indian society was based on graded inequality. Dr. Ambedkar had warned in clear terms, without fraternity, liberty and equality cannot become, uh, equality cannot, not, and therefore is this, that cannot become a natural course of things. It would require a constable to enforce them. Without fraternity, equality, and liberty, there will be no deeper than courts of paint. Constitutional morality requires that all citizens need to have a closer look at and understand and imbibe the broad values of the Constitution which are based on liberty, equality, and Constitutional morality is thus the guiding spirit to achieve transformation, which above all the Constitution seeks to achieve. The acknowledgement carries a necessary implication. The process through which a society matures and imbibes constitutional morality is gradual, perhaps interminably so. Hence, constitutional courts are entrusted with the duty to act as external facilitators. Very important phrase, Milord. To act as an external facilitators and to be a vigilant safeguard against excesses of state power and democratic concentration of power. This court, being the highest constitutional court, has the responsibility to monitor the preservation of constitutional morality as an incident of fostering conditions for human dignity and liberty to flourish. Popular public morality cannot affect the decisions of this court.
I would like to add also, my lord, cannot defer the decisions of this court for the legislative process. Then, my lord, 604 on the next page. Invocation of constitutional morality must be seen as an extension of Dr. Ambedkar's formulation of social reform and constitutional transformation, highlighting the significance of individual rights and social trouble. He observed, the assertion by the individual with his own opinion and beliefs, his own independent interest is over and against group standards, group authorities and group interests in the beginning of all reform. So, my Lord, reform is also a continuous process. Society has gone through a large number of reforms, from widows, from child marriages, from this, that and the other. Number 606. Constitutional morality will impact upon any law which deprives the LGBT individuals of their entitlement to a full and equal citizenship. It's again a reiteration of what I respectfully seek from this court. Nobody can deny, my lord, a full and equal citizenship will be sans marriage, will be sans a family, will be sans the respect of a marriage and forever to be treated as those two people. <clears throat> After the constitution came into force, no law can be divorced from constitutional morality. Society cannot dictate the expression of social sexuality between consenting men. This is a private affair. Constitutional morality will supersede any culture or tradition. The interpretation of a right in matter of decriminalization is beyond the determination, so may be determined by the norms. So, my Lord, will supersede any culture or tradition. Reference was made to culture or tradition by the other side yesterday. 608. LGBT living under the threat of conformity, grounded in culture, morality have been denied to a basic human existence. They have been stereotyped and prejudiced. Constitutional morality requires this court not to turn a blind eye to their right to an equal participation of citizenship and equal enjoyment of life. Constitutional morality requires that this court must act as a counter-majoritarian institution which discharges the responsibility of protecting constitutional entrenched rights regardless of what the majority may believe. Constitutional morality must turn into a habit by citizens. I respectfully submit, my lord, it will become a habit only when it is so declared by an authority no less than the Supreme Court on account lord, of its moral authority. By respecting the dignity, this court is only fulfilling the foundational promises of our constitution, which is, my lord, way back in 1950. Today, we are in 2023. Lord, 613. 613. Now, my lord, 613 will apply equally to the next step, namely marriage. The choice of a partner, the desire for personal intimacy and yearning to find love and fulfillment in human relationships have a universal appeal straddling the age and time. In protecting consensual intimacies, in intimacies the constitution adopts a simple principle. The state has no business to intrude in these personal matters, nor can societal notions of a heteronormative regulate constitutional liberties based on sexual orientation. Actually, my lord, most of this applies not only to, my lord, decriminalization, applies to our position today. Maybe it had been argued then, maybe it would have been done then. Because this is the basis. I am not invoking any new basis, my lord. The basis is already set. It's already the law of the land. But it stopped at decriminalization because that was the issue then. But my lord, Nalsa, Puttu, Swami and this and the basis and the groundwork cemented by this court is the groundwork for the declaration which I seek, my lord. I seek no more. I don't seek any extension. It is already here. Everything is here. C615, my lord. Second line. In addressing the LGBT rights, the constitution speaks as well to the rest of society. In recognizing the rights of LGBT, the constitution asserts itself as a text for governance about the dominance of sex, uh, which promotes true equality, does so by questioning 
prevailing notions about the dominant of sexes and genders in its transformational role, the constitution directs our attention to resolve the polarities of sex and binary gender. In dealing with these issues, we confront much with that poor polarize our society. Our ability to survive the free society will depend whether constitutional values can prevail over the impulse of the time. That is of the current times. Um, you know, 616. 158 years is too long a period for the LGBT to suffer the indignities of denial that has taken 68 years in after the end of the Constitution. is a sobering reminder of the unfinished task which lies ahead. It's also a time to invoke the transmutative power of the Constitution. Then we had the declarations in 618. See, we had 618 too. Now, it applies equally here today. It doesn't apply or limited only to decriminalization, my lord. See, 6182. Members of the community are entitled as all the citizens to the full range of constitutional rights, including liberties. The choice of whom to partner, ability to find fulfillment in intimacy, right not to be subject to system behavior are intrinsic to constitutional protection. This applies equally to marriage. Not restricted, Miller, only do that. No case will be filed against you. Point four, Miller. Members are entitled to the benefit of equal citizenship. This is the broadest phrase. Without discrimination and to the equal protection. I respectfully submit, my lord, these principles apply with equal force today. After a passage of five years, these principles are the same even for what I mean. Then only one thing, my lord, I wanted to show. Kindly, my lord, turn to 640. This is Justice Hindu Malhotra. 640. Actually, my lord, it is similar. Your lordship may note, I don't want to read it. 640, 641. 640.2.4 may be seen, my lord. So, my lord, it's the same thing in, in uh, paraphrasing in different words because of a different learned judge. 642.4. Sexual orientation is innate. It is an important attribute of one's personality and identity. Homosexuality and bisexuality are natural variants of homosexuality. LGBT have little or no choice over their identity. This is very important. So it's not Millard an elitist concept that I have acquired something today. It is innate. I have little or no choice. LGBT, like other heterosexuals, are entitled to the privacy and the right to lead a dignified existence without fear of persecution. So it's not prosecution only, it is persecution. They are entitled to complete uh, uh, autonomy over the most intimate decisions relating to personal life, including the choice of partners. So it will include a sexual act, it will include companionship, it will com include marriage, it will include family, it will include walking in public and other spaces. Then we will write right to privacy 640.3. 640.3.3, the Lord Shimon Mark Placidum E, the right to privacy is not simply the right to be let alone. It has traveled far beyond that. It now incorporates the idea of spatial privacy, decisional privacy, or privacy of choice, extend to the right of fundamental personal choices, including those limit, remaining uh, to sexual conduct. So, we had right to make a fundamental personal choice not limited to sexual conduct will include willy nilly will include Millard marriage. And then after life for uh, right to health, Millard the your Lord she will have Millard 644. I wanted to read that Millard. 644. History owes an apology to the members of this community and their families. So it's not only community, my Lord, I emphasize family, family is also here. For the delay in providing redress for the ignominy and ostracism that they have suffered through the centuries, the members of this community were compelled to live a life of fear, reprisal, reprisal persecution. Account of ignorance of majority would recognize the homosexuality is a complete natural condition, part of a range of homosexuality. 
the misapplication of the fundamental right of equality guaranteed by 14 infringement it infringed the fundamental right to non discriminatory under article 14 etc and that's how the conclusion one paragraph lord i have given you lordship those i don't want to read now those four cases on the right to marry i can give you lot the citations shakti vahini is quoted there already Shafin Jahan is also quoted there, my lord. The two other ones, my lord, may note, my lord. That's all. So there are four of them. Shakti Vahini, under the head of right to marry a person of your own choice. Shakti Vahini and Shafin Jahan are quoted in Justice Chandrachur's opinion. The two others, my lord. One is Deepika. Deepika, my lord, is 2022. SCC online SC 1088 para 26 to be precise and Lakshmi Milot, Lakshmi Bai, Mr. Justice Call speaking for the court 2021 3 SCC 360. Paragraph 11, Milan, to be precise. Now that ends, Milan, Sorry, the tracing of the law. In Deepika saying, what para did you specify? 26, Milan. Para 26. And Where is the Nepal subsequent judgment? In Lakshmi Bhai. Of Deepika? Nepal judgment, subsequent. Yeah, Nepal. Got it now. Oh, you got it? I'll get a printout and give it. Lord, I'll get a printout and give it to your lordship. Headline. The Nepal judgment. Will your lordship might? Sorry. You have given all this in your compilation. Yes. Just give the page numbers. Yes. That's fine. I'll do that. I'll do. In the Nepal judgment, you can email separately. You can separately email it to the court master. Thank you. Email it to the court. Yeah. Sir, I'm I'll leave the word. Now, my lord, we go to the special marriage. Kindly see, my lord, section 2, B. My lord, as I had mentioned yesterday, section 2, like all other sections in other acts, starts with unless the context otherwise requires. So, there is elasticity as a measure of a legislative tool to alter the definitions if the context requires, Milord, because no act can look at all the situations which may arise. But I am not restricting my case only on this. Because I am saying, Milord, this legislative tool may be good when you are discussing a normal law. But today we are discussing a constitutional provision. And if the constitutional declaration is granted, then all subservient law, all laws are subservient to the constitution. They must then be read in conformity with the constitution. It is on that principle that I am going. This, unless the context is, my lord, for normal legislative uh, issues. So now, my lord, please see, to be degrees of prohibited relationship. A man and any of the persons mentioned in part one and a woman and any person mentioned in part two are within the degrees of prohibited relationship. So let's see, my lord, part one. A man with a person in part one will be prohibited. So kindly turn to part one or schedule one at the end of the act. Now, let's see part one. This is all women. So, prohibition is that a man will not have a union with all the persons 
named in part one and similarly a woman will not have a relationship and will be prohibited from having a relationship with the males mentioned in part two because it's for what exactly the same thing now technically my lord father is missing in part 1 i am just posing a question so a man cannot have a relationship with all those who are named in part 1 who are women but technically it can include a father i am only saying technically similarly my lord in part 2 a woman cannot have any relationship with all the males mentioned in part 2 But technically, it includes a mother. Milord is not not there. It's just a conundrum, Milord. But Milord, if you read it now, the way I am saying, if you read it the way I am saying, It includes man and woman as a person. So a person, a person, and any person mentioned in part one, and a person mentioned, and any person mentioned in part two. so both will apply now both parts so they'll be both cumulative correct club them. correct for saying club them so what you want to read it as mr rotugi as one understands is a man instead of a man any um, person or any of the person mentioned in part 1 and 2 of the set schedule so correct. this is what you're saying so both according to if two men are getting married correct. under so the once, special consequently my lord once it is person then one and two will coalesce will coalesce and become one when it be, in fact it is better reading if it becomes one part one and part two will coalesce into one list and then so if it's two men getting married it's not just part one which will apply likewise if two women are getting married correct not just part two my lord apply, my lord according to you. my lord it just so happens to fit my lord when i was doing this that's how it fits see my lord for example but this is also a tacit indication that the special marriage act didn't contemplate people of the opposite uh, sex getting married actually same sex oh, sorry sorry uh, this i'm i meant same sex lord, same with, sex. With ultimately my lord yeah. one can say you are doing violence on the conventional it was, it was 1954 ah uh, no one can say you are doing violence by doing all this but my lord if this has to confirm to the constitutional declaration it has to be this otherwise this will become unconstitutional if the declaration is granted we don't want it to be unconstitutional we want to utilize it actually i was telling brother that you know the relation i just saw is sister's daughter yes alam uh, 30 but uh, in many communities in many areas, right it is almost an intrinsic right to uh, right it is a provide custom yeah so therefore we are in such a very country that uh, yes we lord we lord you right this section 4d provides you stocks of fair custom. is permissible under custom yes. so that is same i was only flagging that is same justice but is right lord if you lord you see it's very difficult to put down in in uh, hard words where you are such a very yeah and customs and now my lord kindly see section 4 conditions relating to solemnization now 41 refers to person so there is no problem 41 a also refers to a spouse b refers to party no problem they are gender neutral now see c my lord c has males and females you leave it as it is if two men are getting married it is 18 if two female or 21 if two females are getting married it is 18 you don't need to change it my lord see this is called see lord see well idea is that you get go beyond your yes yes then 
again why why male and female See, then you are saying comes, person you are flitting in and out yes it comes to prohibitions for one you revert back to your and then you, there are problems when it comes to uh, transgender persons yeah. yes 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 now milord for example then you have to read it like that person yeah, yeah. So how would you read? Only, C only thing is, sorry. How would you read? Say, if you were to substitute the word male and female, you would say. No, so, Milad, one way to read is a person. Yes. If you read it as a person, then, then it will give a dual age. What will be eighteen? What will be twenty-one? Then. That be the problem. Then I mean, I don't mind reading it as a person. So it will be a person has completed twenty-one. No, it can't. And the person is. So for the purposes of the main part which you see the description yes. of. Where it's a person for the main part. My lord. It's a person. It's yes. Neutral in the sense right. that neutral. It is gender neutral. But for C, for purposes of C, you have to you say we will. So you retain it. male and female because there are two ages, my lord. But then you are addressing only. But you uh, only addressing uh, male and female. My lord, I, there is a proposed bill to increase 18 to 21. Right. There is already a bill. Because they find that 18 is also too low. Right. So for child you know, marriages, 18 is also too low. So they want to make it 21. The moment 18 becomes 21 for women. That's a slightly dangerous argument. Yes. No, no, I'm only indicating. You know, I'm not an argument. In fact, interestingly, before just Nasma and me, this part that the female shall be the age of 18 years was challenged by Mr. Ashwini Upadhyay. Yeah. And we dismiss the petition saying that if yeah. we if we hold that that part is unconstitutional, there will no, be no minimum age of uh, marriage for women at all. A four-year-old girl can then get married. So we said, therefore, look, we'll not... Uh, the Lord Shri may read it up. Shwini came here. Remember? So this is the second... Impact, how does it impact those who are a heterosexual couple? Because then you will be looking at this interpretation in a different. Yes, yes, absolutely right. Because the, because we can't forget the heterosexual group. That's right. Because they can also get married. So we can't forget it. So keep that and keep it as it is. No, no. Then then that is what you are saying is for sex relationship between two persons. Yes. For heterosexual couples, for heterosexual yes. couples, this is part one and part two apply. Right. That is one more. That is one way, yes. Yes. One way. That is no, no, correct, correct. It's so, your Lordship is right. Keeping the distinction in mind for the heterosexual and for, you know, this. And then there's a third way, which is for a same sex male couple, yes. it will be 21. For a and same, same sex female couple female will be 18. Would be uh, 18. It will be 18. I, I don't know, sure. Yes, you do. do it exactly <laughs> for the transgenders. I... Is to make then everything is to... 21 for, for purposes. Yes, of... No problem. We have no problem. Then if now, see, Milot 12. By... Sorry. One moment, please. If you go by the, the, the act which was yes. pointed out yes. today, yes. there are so many other spectrum varieties. How do they get accommodated? When you them, how do they get that out? Because Milot, they, they want to deal with that. Otherwise, Milot, I will cover all the appeals. Section 4 guarantees them, Milot, the option to choose gender they manifest. Milot, a male will manifest as... So ultimately, you are going back to the social stereotype which you want to avoid. Milot, that is because we are maintaining... No, no, not a question of because. No, no, I understand. So ultimately, you will you you say you go back there, but for here it is this, and for normal for heterosexual couples it is whatever they are. So this interpretation has to be threefold for this enactment. No, it syncs with you know, uh, Section four only says it syncs, the... it syncs with what you want. Your it suits your purpose. No, no, no. The court has to. The act guarantees the manifested gender. Act guarantees the manifested gender. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll allow. Yes. Okay, the transgender will have to fall in one or the other for that purpose. Anyway, you're breaking we'll up. Up. So we'll hear Mr. Uh, we'll Vishwanathan on that. 
Yeah. Now let's see 12, for example. 12, place and form of solemnization. Now we'll 12, one talks about parties. 12, two talks about parties. Now look at the oath, the last line. I, A, take thee, B, to be my lawful wife or husband. You replace it with spouse. You replace it with spouse, that's it. I take you as a spouse. Will not kindly turn to 27. No, see 22. 22. Restitution. Restitution, Lord, here also, it is husband or wife. Read spouse. Because the third line is agreed party. And the explanation is person. So they are neutral anyway. 23 is the same position, Lord, for judicial separation. C27. Here also, my lord, divorce can be by either party, husband or wife. So you have to read spouse. C, my lord, one capital A. A wife may also present. So a spouse. Then we'll 36, 37. Now this is the right we'll only to women, 36 and 37. Actually, my lord, apart from anything else, so many years have gone by that this would be otherwise unconstitutional today. To say that only, my lord, a husband will be will pay to the wife. Today, in maintenance, under the Hindu Marriage Act, it's either way. Yeah. It's either way, my lord. If the wife is earning much more, the husband is not earning, the wife will pay. That's right. This is an earlier mindset. Actually speaking, it will be unconstitutional today to say, my lord, only one spouse in the marriage will pay on the premise that the husband is the bread earner and the wife is not. So actually, 36 and 37, we suffer from that problem. So read it as spouse. Give the right to both, not only here, but there also. Hmm. I was just... So, my lord...
which will affect not the rights somewhere else. So it is only for us. It is unconstitutional. It's only for us. It is unconstitutional. Yes. yes, possibly. Yes, yes, yes. This is what I was going yes, to yes. How do you deal with this 27 one? No, suppose your Lordship reaches a spouse 27 money. Problem is bestiality also in it. Huh. Hmm? Right. You. My friend Lord wants to say something on that, but let him deal. Lord, I I want to finish, Lord. I am I am done whatever it is. And I am grateful, Lord. My friends will take up take it up forward.
<coughs> your lordship will take your lordship will take it because that i've heard very carefully the sequence the preliminary objection part what my learned friend has argued 95% will not be repeated because there will be some slight overlap here and there. Your Lordship may not get the answer in the immediate sequence your Lordship wants, but I'm going to be dealing with all of it, but your Lordship may rest assured. And I'll have, well, broadly three heads of submissions, which will carry me till tomorrow. But, well, may I just uh, tell your Lordships? How long was the time? Well, uh, I was hoping to do substantially today, but I'm now starting late, but tomorrow, Sometime pre lunch or just at lunch. Okay. I'll, 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 it can't just too much. Well, I'm, I, today, today, it today, your, your ability is to put it in point wise form. No, well, I, I, I think you should uh, finish it much before I, today. I I, I'll tell you, that may not be so, Willis, despite the best of my abilities or lack of them. Tell us, this is a matter of some moment. I am not repeating. I am giving you a lot of facets which are important. But, but I'll be going in a can go to seventhly, eighthly, we'll go. <laughs> well, seven or eight submissions. Pointillism, well, a... pointillism is a virtue which a lot is putting against me, well, <laughs> I thought, well, as I was we are getting a virtue. A virtue and asking you to stand by your word. <laughs> Singh, from the T20 or one day international, you have gone into the test. test. Well, this is this is at least between a one day and a test, if not a test. <laughs> Your lordship will find it, let it flow, I'll not okay. repeat, I won't take a lot of time. Maybe there's a slight overlap tomorrow, but today it might not be possible. I wish I had started earlier, but my learned friend had uh, other issues to deal with today. Yeah. Now, can uh, I... Dr. Singhvi, you will have to... Uh, today we will... See, these matters, um, you have experiences of more than this country, I keep repeating. Nowhere, nowhere I say in the world will arguments proceed in a manner where there's some kind of an infinite time. The Lord 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 Lord. I think courts are liberal. Whatever, maybe after the moment, maybe the most crucial issue, maybe the most issue important for the country. But uh, oh, I don't matters, think time frames can spill over. Some matters Lord, are evolving. They evolve Lord, Lord, as you argue. And more importantly, as a Lordship asks questions, which is very important don't to make, make the matter evolve. You don't make us be quiet. It, no, I'm saying well, it's more important to make it evolve. No, I'm saying it, that for... If it is a presumption that our, our intersections, uh, interventions cause a problem. No, well, I am saying just the opposite. Therefore, it's absolutely the, to my mind, I am very clear, absolutely the outer limit for today. Are there any written submissions that have been... We have, we have. Let us see how it goes. I am confident you will be able to do it. Let's, let's Dr. Singhvi, I am sure there is something which can go from the bench to the bar, which is that, you know, sometimes you feel... That merely because you had longer time to decide a matter doesn't mean that you decided it better. No, no, no. Because a lot of see was how much. Sometimes because you had a longer time, you might have forgotten something also as well. <laughs> so likewise for the bar as well. You know, if, uh, merely because you have a longer time doesn't mean that you put it across. Saying, if my chief was not presiding, I was only there. I would just say my attention span doesn't last this long. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, it's. Any argument. I'll, so I'll remind my learned friend next time, unless when he seeks no, time no, for fellowships. No, no, no. When he no, seeks no. time for done it. for a constitution, I have done remind it. him five minutes. Remember in the arbitration matter, the arbitration you did that. You know that I did that. But I have a remedy of yes, yes. telling. That's not true at all. Which I I will not share, my lord. Uh, anyway, Malas, I think uh, <laughs> I, I have a remedy of curtailing his arguments today, my lord. Anyway. I am only saying that all of us, and I include us also as part of it, have to get used to uh, finishing with whatever matter in a time-bound manner because there are other matters waiting for it to be heard. Well, as all I can say is, all I can say is, because I've had the privilege of doing the last continuous five constitutional benches here, Lord Shubha would not have found me taking extra time in any of those. Yes. And Lord Shubha, rest assured, back to back, Pallas. All that. Rest assured, back. it won't happen again. But Pallas, what is get, there I need to, Pallas, put back. before your Lordship. I'm sure we... Uh, I am confident we'll make you finish. Today. Yes, but well, what is there? Well, I don't want to truncate to a Are fault. You, to a fault. Sybil was on that side with him. Right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Now, Milad, uh, this matter is. You of said you are making three points, right? Yes. Three, three submissions. You said when we. No, broke. those three headings. Well, before I come to the three headings, let me just open by saying, what is this matter about? 
Well, it is of course about those three headings, which are well, first and foremost, the interpretation of the Special Marriage Act. To be interpreted what might be called constitution compliant, consistent with the constitution. On the touchstone of the larger constitutional values of preamble and all the part three relevant articles. So that is constitutional compliant interpretation. And that brings in 21, 19. Most, the operative word is non discriminatory or a discriminatory exclusion or achieving a non discriminatory inclusion. That's the most important catchword in this case. Was. That is the first head. The second head, Malitz, is going to be the notice and objections regime of the same act. And the third would be well, the relief, which your lordship will modulate or tailor or well, mold in whatever appropriate form your lordship wants. Just one point of... On the second point, is there, I, I take it that there is a petition asking for a declaration. Yes, our, our, in particular, my petition. No, particular. no Directly, there are more also. No, no, right. Just so long as there's a prayer, so long as there's a prayer, petition, my learned friend was told, well, rightly that there are other right. matters pending, but he said this is unique okay. to this point. Then and what is the third point you were saying? Third, third is remedies, well, how remedies. mold or tailor the remedies or achieve achieve a result which is effective, Malads, on the ground. Before I go by these three heads, Willis, the first question I ask myself, what is this case about? And a very brief opening, Willis. My submission is, Willis, that the heart of this case is not about the statutory provision, the reading of these sections as constitution compliant or non-compliant, which are important, the notice and objection regime. The heart of this case is, Willis, the right to choose the most enduring of all relationships, the marital relationship, regardless of sex and sexual orientation, regardless of gender or gender identity, And Malus, to manifest the idea of love in marriage, regardless of those distinctions, sex, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, the right to love, the right to manifest that love in the form of marriage, regardless of these identities, is the heart of this case. And the obverse heart of this case is the discriminatory denial to a section, the mirror image part of this case is the discriminatory denial to a section of the community to do it based on that sex, sexual orientation, gender or gender identity. That's the exclusion, that's the discrimination. Malas Navte Johar was momentous by decriminalization. But it still remains, Malas, in a real sense, little done, vast undone. And your Lordship is now traveling from the little done in the journey of the vast undone. Your Lordship is trying to do the significant done. There will always be, of course, things left. So, your Lordship is removing the next brick of discrimination and exclusion. Exclusion and discrimination is the heart of that issue.
the lordship has dealt with anti discrimination as the underlying philosophy of navte johar the lordship is now melos knitting a more seamless web if your lordship agrees with this side of anti discrimination on several other facets that was because in that sense a relatively small patch and melos the other facet of this case at the outset is melos the recognition that it is not the state alone which threatens these core constitutional values it is not the state alone which imperils but is the core values of equality liberty fraternity it is balads also groups private groups non state actors is used in a different context non state actors well but it applies here as well which are melus call me called entrenched and encrusted forces over the years whether in society or as a constitutional thing melus they also could be even new forms of organization new forms of organization they also need melus these groups which are here on this side need melus protection from those entrenched and encrusted forms also i'm not calling them villains but i'm saying from a certain melus entrenched thinking process which can be as invasive of those core values as state action that's the point i'm making they can be an r and therefore melus your lordship will be dealing with striking by melus protecting those vulnerable sections from both those facets state and non state what could be an example of that one for one obvious example would be the notice and objections regime one 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 obvious that example i i mean immediate reaction but there are many more i mean uh, one obvious example is notice and objections regime so that that for that uh, it's that argument prevails yeah that argument prevails for that that uh, uh, provision but i'll be giving more example as i go along because vigilante groups Uh, well, no the point is social process as being what they are yes a declaration of marriage or even the kind of relief that you seek how will that per se result in your protection you will you will of course that seven issue perhaps is a, the easiest way out no, but think. otherwise otherwise the protection that you seek seek would uh, would would want us yes. to give up for wider declaration now assume your lordship were to hold that same person marriage i'm using i'm not giving into the consequences is valid the validation the legalization of same sex or same person marriage is well as along with necessary consequences a very big victory your lordship is not able to eliminate murder but your lordship has said murder in law is wrong when a lordship says murder in law is right or in this case well something else is right that is the protection once your lordship protects me by declaration i am on the right side of the law you are in the right side of the law for yes. no no difficult but those groups will continue to operate the, the way they are unless what you are saying is this the value of this right is such that the state is under an obligation to protect you Absolutely, no, no, and that's it. Malus, once we are, no, no, once your lordship, it's not a mere declaration. We have asked specifically in our protocol. No, Malus, I, 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 I
See, if that's the argument, yes. Now, in that sense, there will be. Uh, I mean, we'll be asking the state to do the, nothing wrong in it. The state is bound to protect. It. But we were straight away answer that. Exercise of free speech, for instance, the state plays a role. Absolutely, Melis. Now, Melis, for a minute, let us not. I do not want to minimize the great advance your lordship would be doing by merely giving the declaration without even the very important point my friend is making. For a minute, I'm testing it by answering your lordship by testing it. Your lordship Malas, assumes, assume Malas, that your lordship puts you on the right side of the law with consequential Malas, directions. Malas, the first and foremost consequence of that is that the, I am entitled to Malas, seek, ensure, and Malas, demand as a matter of right state protection. For an invasion of what is declared as a valid valid thing, just even without this. Just sorry, just one last question to yes. play the devil's advocate. Yes, yes. What prevents the state from protecting you today, because it is decriminalized? Decriminalization it, is a very small part. Then it doesn't give me any of the rights I can demand, Balas. Once I am in a marriage, yeah. once I am in a marriage, that it doesn't just give. Come me. back after I'll lunch. Get into these mm -hmm. answers, otherwise.
Yes, Dr. Sumit. So, Melissa, I will first deal with the larger constitutional facets on non discrimination, dignity, and free speech. And then I will give a lot of very interesting Melissa, development on the approach to interpretation to make things constitutional compliant in this country and in England, Melissa, to make them treaty compliant. That is a very interesting new development which will answer your Lordship's query. And then I will come to Malus, the reconciliation which Justice Bhatt mentioned about. It will be much better to do it in that sequence. Exactly the reconciliation of wanting to choose what you want here also and there also and the inconsistency of any. It will Malus, fit in there. So let me proceed in that way. So Malus, on the larger picture, as I said, these are the three constitutional facets being practiced on ascriptive issues. Ascriptive issues are those which are not taken by choice, which are largely involuntary. So the, if there is discrimination or a violation of dignity or a violation of the larger concept of free expression, it is based on ascriptive issues. Charact ascriptive characteristics is a better word. Race, caste, ethnicity, national origin, here it would be Millers, sex or sexual orientation. And according to us, the implied exclusion of the entire LGBTQ class <coughs> from SMA is based on a sole marker of identity, sex and sexual orientation. So the conceptual point is that the implied exclusion, because according to there is no exclusion explicitly, the implied exclusion of LGBT class is based on a sole ascriptive characteristic, namely sex or sexual orientation as a marker of identity, as it could be, for example, origin or race, etc., which is not an issue here. The second aspect here in the larger constitutional perspective is that bullets, when the government of India in its various places on the counter, and I'll read one line only, says, for example, socially, culturally, and legally ingrained into the idea and concept of marriage, the traditional marriage forms. Bullets, it fails to really address that the SMA was created by your lordship, by your lordship, I mean by the legislature, as an alternative to what you might call socially, culturally, legally ingrained concepts of marriage. The very creation of SMA was that. To include what might be called, but then I use a loose phrase, not quite right to use it, but that's the real way to use it, unpopular marriages, interfaith marriages, socially sanctioned marriages, directly or indirectly, unless you had them in mind the socially sanctioned marriages in a negative sense, why would you create a SMA? So, well, the government of India is actually hoist on its own petard when it says that we will look only at a particular format of marriage, but you have got well, the SMA for decades. Actually, if you dig deep, the government of India is saying really that I am that you are liable to be excluded, Mr. Singh, only because of the ascriptive characteristic, involuntarily, externally, and not by choice. Now, Malus, there is this phrase, hoist on your own petard, which Malus applies in a very delightful way here. Because what does the government there say? It says marriage is a vital institution, we must protect it. Then they say, we've got all the extracts from the counter. It is something which lies at the heart of society and your lordship is really attacking the base of society. If being asked even to read in different forms of marriage, etc., etc. Well, it's why I use the word hoist of the own petard. 
in para 15 of my written submission i have in fact said that it is because marriage is a vital foundation that we the excluded class wants to have all those indicia or index of marriage which follow a marriage namely what why is marriage important malus why is it that there is one class of marriage i will use the word traditional marriage versus the other excluded class non traditional let's use just a neutral phrase reason number 1 for those who seek any form of marriage whether this side or that side they seek it malus for a community and a social validation of a relationship and i can't agree more with mr tushar mehta that just like heterosexuals seek it and deserve it non heterosexuals seek it and also deserve it number 2 marriage is vital and important because of a sense of security it provides two couples of course it applies much more to vulnerable couples which are already already protecting under sma and this is another set of vulnerable couples this side but it applies as a sense of security to couples generally and why should there be an exclusion of one set of couples for that as opposed to another set so i learned it is absolutely right it's because of the importance of the institution of marriage that we wanted to apply across the board across this table not that it stops in between this table third it provides well as greater financial support oblique security and not one of these if it applies to heterosexual couples should not well as travel on to the non heterosexual class not one of these based on an ascriptive disqualification number 4 which i have just put in a chart now i made an appendix which you should find useful what my lord put as consequences that's the fourth point it's a gateway to those consequences i mean obviously i don't marry because i want a tax benefit i mean some people do but <laughs> some people do but well sir uh, normally i mean you would not be but well it is a gateway to 10 important things there people even separate to get tax money yes what i was going to that say that actually is more likely well very I common more likely or pretend to separate as the case may be mm. but well uh, those gateways are tax inheritance adoption take but most important is adoption your lordship has in this court well well before we started talking about well the scriptive cases like this many years or decades several colleagues of ours who may be single persons who have adopted we know it was we have been in the bar your lordship has been in the bar incidentally even if a couple is in a is in a gay relationship or a lesbian relationship one of them can still adopt no no man is more so, uh, the whole argument that you know this will create a sort of uh, a psychological impact on the child with great is belied by the fact that even today on the state of the law as it stands grateful once you have decriminalized homosexuality absolutely the, you have therefore it's open to people to live in uh, together and you can one of you can adopt it's well, just that you know the child the, loses the benefit of parenthood so to speak of of with, uh, both with the with respect if your lordship were to look around practically on the ground this is one of the most important reasons which is fourth uh, i'm sorry uh, fifth is that well as marriage by itself or rather what should we call it marital status i'm sorry i'm sorry marital status is by itself well as a source of dignity fulfillment and self respect these are not mere adjectives well as this is a real life real world it does happen well as it is actually happening it is vital and a lot of people are acting for that basis 
it's a source of dignity, fulfillment, and self-respect as a core member of society. And whereas last is, it's an integral aspect of the ability to have and enjoy a family life. To have and enjoy a family life with the other indicia we have talked about. There will also be cross reference in brackets. Para 15 of my WS has these. Just I, I'll come to it later. I'll just cross reference it on the side. Para 15. Now, Malitz, if I may digress here for 30 seconds only, just turn to Appendix 1 of my written submission at page 30 of my written submissions, which is a useful listing. This is a bit of a digression, it's a useful listing. Part of what? 453 of the written submission, one. Of the written submission volume. Apparently, your lordship in your soft copies have written submission sets all together. In that set, I am 453. We go to volume 1 of the compilation? Uh, one, yeah. volume, uh, yes, comp volume 1, page 453. It starts, right? Got it. Number uh -huh. 7. Page 4. Yes, your number Sorry, 7. Sorry, appendix is at page 453. Number 7. It starts at 424. My appendix is at 453. 453. Index volume 1. Volume 1. Volume 1. Compilation 1. What volume 1? I'm told well, the file for your lordships is called compilation one. Yes, compilation. Correct, correct. Some 900 odd pages. Yes. These are the laws. Which para you want us to read? Now, let's just go to page 453 of my written submission, just the appendix. Appendix one. Yeah, appendix one, correct. I have made it vertical rights and horizontal rights. It doesn't really matter so much for the time being, but vertical rights are more against the state or involving the state. And horizontal rights are under non-state groupings. This is called, it's got four, five. Only one second. Yes. Now, Malaz, do you want us? Uh, it's at page 32. So it will be PDF page four, 453. When I... 456. When I... When I intervened yesterday to 456, say... 456, sorry. Of this... Of this uh, print file. Page 456. Yeah. Appendix 1, no? Mm. Yeah. Appendix 1. When I intervened yesterday to say that your lordship is not malus hearing just the word marriage or a concept of marriage, just kind of a label given, but a meaningful... Content. Meaningful concept with content. All doesn't have it. Yeah, no. Got it? When I said yesterday, Malus, that your lordship is not de dealing with an abstract concept of marriage as a label to be put on my head without content, without meaningful Malus uh, consequence, this is the meaning. One category I've given five, six points in my para 15. I just gave it to your orally, which is the more societal aspect. These are the more concrete aspects. And which of these is deniable merely because I am not Malus that side of the table, but I am Malus the other category of couple, adoption, surrogacy, interstate succession, tax exemption, tax deductions. It simply requires marriage. That's all. Compassionate government appointments. And this is, of course, only illustrative. I don't claim it to be exhaustive. This is illustrative, but this is a useful list. We are not talking of anything else. Only marriage is required. Everything else follows. Compensation to dependents. Appointment of nominee for receipt of post-retirement benefits. Privilege is an interesting one, Malus. Spousal communication, 123. Now, Malus, largely forgotten. 122, I'm sorry. Right to bodily remains, and so on and so forth. There is the next page, which is the horizontal set. 
which are more or less uh, daily incidents of harassment, if I may use that phrase. There is one in interesting one question here. We yes. talk of, for instance, insurance. Now, the insurance law per se, do we have the... Any that is item one in the horizontal side. Yes. Number one. Yes. Family insurance. Yes. Medic medical also, I assume. Renting homes, opening buying the, accounts. Are, these are subject to regulations. Yes. So IRDA, do you have IRDA regulations or these are just these are standard policies which are approved? Uh, I have not given a lot of the individuated thing. They would originate from an IRDA requirement, but they will be all in all the policies. No, no, I agree. Uh, I'm saying that those IRDA regulations, do they use these expressions or are they left loose? I'll have the specific regulation I, checked I up. suspect they're, they're, uh, they're open-ended. They're open-ended because... You could nominate someone who is not your family member. One, we are not looking at a nomination. We could, we are looking at a default situation. For instance, I'm talking of a group. Members. Actually, this is copying of group insurance. Your option is right. Nomination can be anybody in the family or, anyone in fact, even non-family also. Well, we are talking of a group insurance. I'm a family, one, two, and children. Then you get a family group insurance. There you may not get. I will give you a lot of the exact regulation. If any, just make a note of it. But well, the group will not be available without the marriage so format. This is not, in that sense, totally horizontal. It is dependent on those regulations, right? Very well. Yeah. This may partake a little bit of this and that other also. You know, she was right. This may... But well, I have likewise, a feeling likewise, that... Likewise, you see, you come to joint ba ba bank accounts. You have the banking regulations. Maybe some RBI the... regulations. Maybe. They will also have these regulations or, or laws. But my, my lord is right. Well, I mean, that could be an overlap. But You're looking point... at two steps beyond that. Yeah. I am saying, well, it's... At the end of the day, the basis of denying me is that I am not married. Or that I am married in a form not accepted by law. That's about it. That, that's the bottom, bottom line. But please give me also the insurance. And the you see, things. the point is, yes. there are certain things which can be perhaps done straight away. Yes. Without entering the other arenas. If that yes. Those are perhaps segregable. This is a, you know, open thought. That if there is no prohibition, or provision in the parent enactment, it becomes that much easier. Well, my Lord is right. That may require a more detailed nitty-gritty segregation. My Lord is right. For example, policies have it or not, but I will do that to the extent we can. My learned friends will help us, well as to give us. But just the recognition of marital status will be a very great advance in any case. That's the first point. marriage. Now, how my Lord defines marriage will address those concerns immediately. So any bank, there is no specific RBI guideline on who can. The assumption there is if you are spouses, you can have that joint bank account. Similarly for insurance. See, well. uh, this is where, you know, there is, this is where this, uh, Ms. Kuroswami, if you go back to some of the older cases, Yes, if you remember that consumer make note of both LIC, yes, the court actually gave a direction, 1995, Justice Ramaswamy's judgment. So there are certain things which can be done straight away without much, you know, barrier, you know, yes, without having to overcome barriers. So that is what you have to identify and tell us. We'll add that. We'll add that. What my Lord is saying is there may be something which may have no barrier at all. In, in this, my Lord, I suspect that the moment the court opens up the definition of marriage, those concerns are addressed because routinely insurance companies and banks have only this concern. You have to be married. married. That's, Housel, that's all. And that will be but that's the baseline, Lord. In any case, that baseline is there. Whatever additional Lordship has is... By saying I will give you a lordship two illustrative examples of bank accounts and insurance.
saying only this, that we will give your worship two illustrative examples of the minutiae for family insurance and bank, but the baseline requirement of marriage is the crucial point, Malas, which your worship is at the moment from our side focusing on. Now, Malas, of these three headings, the most important is discriminatory exclusion in the constitutional context, the first one. Discriminatory exclusion of this class on only sex and sexual orientation. Which is, I've said, an ascriptive characteristic. Now, uh, Navtej has been read in great detail. I have taken notes well as and instructed also to say that three paras have not been read, and I'll only want those three paras to be underlined. Let me show them. Your lordships are more suspicious of and more inclined to interfere when Malad's classifications of disadvantage based on sex or gender are involved facially. That's the principle of Navtej, also which has not been read. Just come to 316 para number, firstly. At page 9, uh, Malad's at page 165 of the SCC, 947 of your Lordship's PDF. Volume 1, PDF, your Lordship is marked in Navtej in great detail. What? 947, para 316. Well, amongst ascriptive conditions, where the ascriptive conditions... Nine one seven. Nine four seven. Para three one six. Just one second. Just one second. This is the same page of the same Navtej also marking. Two three. And now type nine four seven. Three one six. Three one six. Even amongst script, even amongst ascriptive conditions, your Lord. Seventy eight. Nine forty seven. Para three one six. Nine seventy eight. Sorry, it's uh, PDF is nine seventy eight. Seventy eight. That's a PDF page. Not both you to give the one they are using. You give me not both, give me what they are using. Yeah. So well, even amongst ascriptive conditions, your lordship will look more uh, suspiciously at those based on gender and sex. Just come to 316. The learned judges then went on to further hold that the standard of judicial scrutiny. Now we are on the standard of judicial scrutiny on the approach which on their face effect discrimination is as follows. It is borne in mind that legislation pronounced protective discrimination aims such as this one potentially serve as double-edged swords. I'll read the italicized portion, Mullis. Legislation should not only be assessed on its proposed aims, but rather on the implications of the effects. The impugned legislation suffers from incurable fixations of stereotype, morality, and conception of sexual role. The perspective thus arrived at is outmoded in content and stifling in means. Now, I'm interested in the next parameters. No law in its ultimate effect should end up perpetuating the oppression of women. Personal freedom is a fundamental tenet which cannot be compromised in the name of expediency unless there is compelling state purpose. Heightened, this is the last sentence, heightened level of security is the normative threshold for judicial review in uh, scrutiny in, in, in such cases. And then, Malads, 
which is 1079, the correct page for them. Triple one zero, page number, para 637.3. PDF pages triple one zero. We are giving only PDF number. Now PDF. Well, it's the whole para is important, but to save time, I won't read the whole. It was talks of. 377 criminalization of all forms of non penile vaginal intercourse, etc. Come to Malas, the last four lines of 637.3. The natural or innate sexual orientation of a Which person. Para are you reading? Malas, I'm reading. Triple one zero is the PDF page. Para is 637.3. Yes. The last part, just as scholars got of that para, 637.3. The end. The natural or innate sexual orientation of a person cannot be a ground for discrimination, where a legislation discriminates on the basis of an intrinsic and this core just, trait. This is Justice Ma Indu Malhotra. I beg pardon? Yes, yes Justice Malhotra. That's correct. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the ascriptive. Well, the word ascriptive is not the exactly ascriptive. Yes, yes. Core trait of an individual cannot form a reasonable classification based on individual uh, intelligible differentia. Then one para after next, Malhotra, next page. Point five, a person's sexual orientation is intrinsic to their being. It is connected with their individuality and identity, a classification which discriminates between persons on their innate nature. That's ascriptive. That's the meaning of ascriptive. Would be violative of their fundamental rights and cannot withstand the test of constitutional morality. It's actually very simple, right? You cannot discriminate against, the state cannot discriminate against an individual on the basis of a characteristic over which the person has no control. Exactly. That's, that's, well, that's if I may say so, very pithily and very simply put. That's the essence of it. But you are also now to apply it, traveling away from well, the criminalization to a general principle also it applies. How can it be that criminalization apply, it doesn't apply elsewhere? Then, well, And when you say that, you know, this is an innate characteristic, it's also an argument in response to the contention that this is very, you know, elitist or it's urban or it has a certain class bias. It, once something which is innate can't have a class as a, bias. As a matter of fact, it can never be malice, a bias because you know in any form acquired. It may be more urban in its manifestations because more people in urban okay. areas are coming out of the closed closets. But malice in smaller town, India is no more only that right. rural urban. We have this nice word urban. We have a very big swathe of Indian territory and population which is urban. And Indeed, well, there's, there's no data, no data no, is no data coming out by the government to indicate that this is urban or anything like that. Nothing. Nothing. No data at all. We're just gonna... this Grover, that was no, no, no. One of the points we are making is that every government in the counter is without the single survey, single data, single well, test. Not one. I've made that point well, repeatedly in my written submissions. <laughs> Innate and autonomy to choose. Question. Question. Just on this, my client was forced to go to the streets, Zainab Patel, transgender, disowned by the family, wrecked on the streets, came up on her own, and today she is Milada, director in KPMG, all by herself. To be branded urban elitist Milada is there. She was absolute lack of grace, Milada. Union should have shown a little more grace in the count. Wrecked on the streets, on her own, came up. Today she is Milada, 
member of the transgender council nominated by the government under the act and similarly my lords in my petition akkai padmashali she is a well known trans activist at the age of 15 she was thrown out of her house she had to drop out of school she was on the streets and thereafter my lords she has come back to the mainstream and i know this is a life they have to lead to say that they are elitist these are totally poor working class backgrounds people of kanchan and to say that this is an elitist concern my lords is thank you very much neha parna सिंपल क्वेश्चन आर यू रियली फाइलिंग
Yes, doctor. Your lordship will now come to us by written submission. Para. Can we just get back to you a little later so that that's, yes. that way Dr. Singhvi's flow is there. Yeah, we'll, we'll complete with Dr. Singhvi's uh, Page, my written submissions will start at 427. Your lordship has a compilation. Yes. Only submissions. In that PDF page is yes, 427. Yes. Come to Malas 433 or other 432 where para 19 is there. Para 432 of my submissions. Uh, volume 1, you get to go to compilation 1 now. Click on compilation 1. Four twenty nine. Just click on the just click on the last 460 with a high. Uh, 429. You can just scroll down. So it'll take a second. He was uh, in any event, this uh, repetitioner submit that the exclusion fails the test of 14. While there does exist an intelligible differentia, which is sexual orientation, it cannot most possibly have any rational nexus. Now come to 20. First, it is important to reiterate that in its origin and evolution, SMA is an avowedly secular law, which was meant to serve as an alternative for individuals who could not or did not want to solemnize marriages under applicable personal religious law my Lord is so said in para 15 and 19 of that judgment, Neha. Now this SOR is important. As per the SOR of the SMA, the act was passed to, quote, provide a special form of marriage which can be taken advantage of by any person in India and by all Indian nationals in foreign countries, irrespective of the faith which either party to the marriage may profess. Consequently, and I'm not concerned with Hindu marriage act, I wish them good luck. They have several other important points on their side. I'm not trading on their path, but I'm just saying, in contrast to the HMA, where the conditions must comply with Hindu religion, the SMA is an a-religious or non-religious marriage-related legislation. This addresses a point that the respondent repeatedly makes in its counter-affidavit. What is this main point, fellas? Cultural understanding of marriage as a union. Cultural understanding of marriage was not the basis of the SMA. So what you are saying is that the SMA was basically intended to be agnostic to faith. Exactly. So by reading it as agnostic to sexual orientation, you are not making a leap of faith. Leap of faith. On the same. Grateful. That's a pretty summary. What is Balas also religion is very heavily imbued with culture. If it is, as Rashi puts it, agnostic to faith, it is also largely agnostic to cultural situations. It cannot be divorced. Secondly, well, let's just pause here for a minute before I go to the later part. Broadly, the government of India is saying what? I mean, look at with great respect to the kind of stand. Stand one, cultural ethos we've dealt with. Stand two, which I am very strongly supporting, marriage is a vital institution. I say so, I give in my para 15 those six reasons, and in my appendix, the several important secular consequences. Third reason that, well, let's, uh, it will impact personal law, which your lordship will now put on a separate bullet side. Now, the fourth reason is important and interesting. It is what is known as self-referential or self-validating statements. What is self-referential? What they are saying is, since I, the government of India, have defined marriage as a union between man and woman, therefore, by definition, you are wrong and illegal. Well, this your lordship has said, 
is an example of self-validating reasoning or self-referential reasoning. In Muller's constitutional terms, it Muller's actually equates classification with legislative purpose in Article 14 terms. I just it conflates the two. Where have you formulated so we can read it and then uh, yes. you make yourself. Well, this is 22 and 23. Let's just read that. 22. Secondly, the respondent cannot argue, as it does in para 23, his counter para 23, that it has simply defined marriage as a union between a man and a woman, and that constitutes legislative policy. That would be circular and self referential reasoning which does nothing more than, this is important, but equate the classification with the purpose. This obviously cannot be a valid defense to an Article 14 challenge, as in effect, any legislative classification can pass Article 14 scrutiny by the state simply declaring that the classification itself is the purpose. Give me, a, let us see an example, brothers. As an example, one can imagine the state announcing a welfare benefit that it then declares off limits for blue eyed people. On being challenged, the state simply says, on being challenged, the state simply says that it has defined the welfare benefit as one that all persons except blue eyed people are eligible for, and that the legislative purpose is to exclude blue eyed people from accessing. It is submitted, this is self-referential to decide whether exclusion of blue-eyed is valid or not. Not that I say that it's blue-eyed or out. You have to decide the validity of blue-eyed being out. That itself may be wrong or right. But the Obviously, the basis of the classification cannot be conflated that's with the purpose of the two, They can't be conflated, which is what is happening here, unfortunately. Well, it's one example where... My Lord's Brothers dealt with this situation was Deepak Sibbal's case. Evening law classes. Where, Brothers? LLB. Your Lordship knows that, of course, was a case where, Brothers, your Lordship had uh, uh, enrollment in evening law classes. Uh, evening law classes. The answer was this only that the purpose is to exclude people from. Your Lordship, the whole idea is whether the purpose is valid or not. What is that old saying of Pascal, Brothers? I think, therefore, I am. If you adapted for the government of India, the affidavit says, it is right because I say in my counter it is right. It really amounts to that, brothers. Now, let's kindly see Deepak Sibbal. State sought to justify legislative classification limiting enrollment in evening law classes to government employees by deploying the self-referential reasoning that the purpose was to provide legal education to only government employees. In effect, equating the classification with the purpose, your lordship struck it down in paras 18 to 20, as well as illogical and well as not sustainable. And here it applies in this way, Malas, that simply because by definition, it is only a union between man and woman, and therefore, Malas, it is out of the present petitioner's ken. Then, Malas, para 26 of my note, which is para 24 of the counter, is the same cultural ethos and societal values. Apart from the fact, Malas, that this is a very general, Malas, one more thing, it pervades the counter. Not a single survey, not a single... Well, it's thing, point. statistical, brandized brief to say anything, well, that this is valid. It's a ipsa dixit. Now, well, in any case, a lot of has read that judgment that societal values cannot trump equal treatment. That principle, a lot of note on the side, I've not given it here. That's para, a lot of read in the morning. You can't trump well, equality principles by reference to societal values. If I am here on exclusion, based on discrimination, then assuming, I'm not at all accepting that societal values make it outside of the ken. But if they were, it cannot, Balutz, trump non-discriminatory principles. By definition, Malaz, this is the second part of my para 26, by definition, equal treatment and non-discrimination requires challenging majoritarian social norms. Otherwise, there's no question of non-discrimination. Challenging societal norms, whether gender, caste, etc.
Whereas if your lordship excludes all this, then the only basis for this sexual orientation test will be animus. It's a very important point. I'll not take you to the case. I've quoted it in my para 27. Let me read that. Thirdly, this leaves the only remaining legislative purpose as animus against the community and the refusal to treat them as equal moral members of society by offering them the same range of benefits as opposite sex couples. It is clear that any such purpose needs only to be stated to be rejected. Legislative purpose itself cannot be discriminatory or unconstitutional. This is another facet of the same point. The purpose cannot be discriminatory or Wallace, exclusionary. Now, the South African Constitutional Court said, Wallace, the exclusion of same-sex couples from the legal institution of marriage conveys a message of unequal moral concern or respect of the Constitution. They said so in these words, the exclusion of same-sex couples from the benefits and responsibilities of marriage Beautiful. accordingly is not a small and tangential inconvenience resulting from a few surviving relics of societal prejudice, destined to evaporate like the morning dew. It represents harsh, if oblique, statement by the law that same-sex couples are outsiders. It's the outlier, which is exclusion, which is discrimination, which is Article 14, 15, and 16. It's the exclusion, the outlier. And that their need for affirmation and protection of their intimate relations as human beings is somehow less than that of heterosexual couples. It reinforces the wounding notion that they are to be treated as biological oddities, it's rather well put, Maris, as failed or lapsed human beings who do not fit into normal society and as such do not qualify for the full moral concern and respect that our constitution seeks to secure for everyone. It signifies that their capacity for love Commitment and accepting responsibility is by definition less worthy than that of heterosexual couples. But as if your lordship were to look for the philosophical underpinning, but I say also the core constitutional value underpinning, this is rather well put. And I'm uh, Alice, of course, it is LB Sachs for us, we know that it's LB Sachs. But Malus, LB Sachs also could not, Malus, have, he has better bested himself. Malus. He's written some very, very good passages, but he has, Malus, Really have you read his book, The Strange Alchemy of Law and Life? That's a, that's a brilliant book, actually. But well, here in a very, very pithy no, manner. Albie Sachs, there's a great story about Albie Sachs. Sachs was very closely associated with the African National Congress. Yes. And, um, you know, when he was driving his car once, a bomb was placed under his car, which blew, blew up and he lost his arm. Um, and... Um, I and believe there is a Netflix. Then, you know, they, the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission yes. was instituted in South Africa. And Sachs has narrated the story. He went for, a, he want, went for an evening, uh, so he was having a drink at the bar, when someone came and said to him, well, um, somebody wants to come and meet you. So he said he was intrigued. So he said, well, that person can come and meet you. I can come and meet me. The person who came and said hello to him was the very person who had planted the bomb under his car. Ah, yes, yes. So, you know, then Sachs speaks about, you know, his sense of forgiveness and... Uh, yes. And he heavily influenced Malus, Mandela and the whole system for that Malus, concept of truth and reconciliation. He was the... But Malus, uh, this is, if I may say so, one of the best legal statements. I have put it in my compilation and Malus, it is uh, almost Malus, now, uh, Malus, in, elsewhere in the early part of my submission, which I have not read, we have identified 33 examples. 10 examples in 10 different countries are like this of Malus judicial uh, interpretation consistent with constitutional values, not doing violence to values, bringing in marriage recognition for same sex persons. Those 10 countries, for Lordship's information, would be Austria, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Mexico, South Africa. Your Lordship just read with me. Taiwan, and of course the US. And about 23 have legislated it. They're both examples. But these 10 I have given. Some others which are the European Human Rights Courts, etc. Ah, yes, Russia. Yes, 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 yes. Not uh, uh, sovereign domestic courts, but well as yeah, the yeah, Human Rights Court. 
So now it's expanding. This is an earlier list of about 33, of which 10 malas are judicial. The earliest one was perhaps England. What malas? Uh, England, UK. Ah, yes, yes. England, uh, yes, yes. So therefore, malas, and I'll be coming to a very interesting verse. England is believed to be much more timid, restricted, and circumscribed in its interpolis, in the acrobatics which anybody can do in judicial review. I will give you an extraordinary article and a two cases, how far they've gone on interpretation. Of course, identical to us because we have the constitution, so Lordship is looking today at a constitution compliant interpretation, if I may use that word. They've done exactly the same for a treaty compliant interpretation. That's because of the Human Rights Act. And, you and they've gone, no, but the declaration of incompatibility. Incom incom I am surprised at the state of the government of India. Your Lordship's fellow not only has much more power, but has gone much further. In that case, I will cite, well, as they've said, that it is wrong to think that text of the statute is a limitation. It is wrong to think that even intent is a limitation. With evolving dynamics of time and society, the two tests are to make it treaty compliant, which is exactly the same as constitutional compliant. A, uh, Melissa, the, the underlying thrust of the legislation, and B, the institutional capacity of the court. And by institutional capacity, they've explained further to say it means that unless the court feels that it is being asked to naked usurpation of legislation, namely, well, your lordship goes beyond the limit, not doing some legislation, but your lordship is virtually asked to transgress all limits and become a legislator. Barring these two, it is wrong to say that the text is a limitation because they say text evolves over time. And intent also evolves over time. It is English courts are saying this. There's a beautiful article which I also will come in. That will take some time because the Lordship's approach to interpretation is identical today if your Lordship accepts it this way or that way. But the test is the same. Your Lordship is looking in the first part of my submission not to strike down anything. Your Lordship is looking to make the make it compliant. constitutional compliant. Those judges in that article tells your Lordships how they were making it treaty compliant in identical situations on an evolving dynamics of society. Then, Malitz, there is another facet, Malitz, of manifestly arbitrary. Your Lordship knows, Malitz, Article 14 to just digress, for, it's important to digress for 30 seconds, Malitz. Till, Malitz, Royappa, etc., I mean, broadly, if there have been earlier cases, your Lordship had only, Malitz, the discriminatory aspect. Then your Lordship got the arbitrary aspect, just developing nascently in Royappa. Then your Lordship carried that arbitrary aspect much further in Maneka, Ajay Hasya, and all those cases. And now, Malas, your Lordship has turned Malas, Mr. Benegal Rao and Mr. Frankfurter over in their grave <laughs> by bringing in full due process. He, yeah. he picked up the Japanese constitution yeah. and put it in Article 21 because Mr. Frankfurter said, look, you do anything you like, but don't do this. Your Lordship Malus camouflaged it by calling it procedural due process in Maneka. Now we brought Mr. in substantive Rao. due process. Now Malus, substantive due process. Mr. Rao must Chai have Rao. talked even Ta within two years. And Mr. 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 Malus, uh, Frankfurt would have died a second time, Malus. Justice Frankfurt yes. actually imported it. Yes. It just took another uh, 20 odd years. And Malus, after Maneka, where your Lordships kept the pretense of procedural due process for a few decades, your Lordship now has all of them, Malus. Talak, Triple Talak, Joseph Shine, any number of cases, manifestly arbitrary, which is nothing but substantive due process. Now, with that backdrop in mind, kindly consider what your Lordship is today judging, Melis. Your Lordship is allowing the creation of hierarchy between different conceptions of the family. It's another way of looking at the same thing, conceptually, Melis. Your Lordship is allowing distinctions, foul of 14, 15, 16, by Melis having a hierarchy between different conceptions of the family involving unions between some kinds of persons more equal than others who have unions. Of course, again, based on their descriptive characteristics. So hierarchy, which is a subclassification, your Lordship will not allow in Article 14. Of course, it's, a, it's another angle to look at the same thing. Don't allow hierarchization of family units between those penalized for their descriptive tendencies versus heterosexual couples.
Yes. Your Lordship's fellows actually said this. Of course, not the ratio of the case, because my lords were dealing with us with uh, a narrower issue about a mother with children from the first marriage. But your Lordship's principle is clearly stated in my Lord Justice Chandrachur, as he then was in Deepika Mills, atypical family units. And the para is 26. Lord Shubhan, note that para. That was cited but not read. It was cited by Mr. Deepika Haryana. Deepika Haryana. Which one? Deepika Mills, 22. That is Mills, in your Lordship's compilation mm -hmm. at, at page 84 at 91. Just read that one para, Mills. My Lord has put it very pithily. Atypical family units referring to Malas, uh, queer relationships, equally deserving. Can you turn to that page, Malas, just for a minute. Para 26 is that page, is it 60? Page 91 PDF. 91? Yes. Ah, volume 1. Volume 1. Single. Volume 1. Para? Para 6, uh, 2, 6. 91 PDF. Page 91. Page 91. 91 PDF. That's the hierarchization created wrongly, I say, Melis. May I read? Yes. The predominant understanding of the concept of a family, both in the law and in society, is that it consists of a single, unchanging unit with a mother and a father who remain constant over time. This is very important, Melis. This is the meaning of conceptions changing. This assumption and their children. This assumption ignores both and the many circumstances which may lead to a change in one's familial structure. And the fact that many families do not conform to this expectation to begin with. Familial relationships may take the form of domestic, comma, unmarried partnerships or queer relationships. A household may be a single parent household for any number of reasons, including the death of a spouse, separation or divorce. One. I'm interested in the second part of this, but just see, read the next few lines. Very pithily put. A household may be a single parent household for any number of reasons, including death. Similarly, the guardians and caretakers who traditionally occupy the roles of the mother and the father, inverted commas, of children may remain, with, may change with remarriage, comma, adoption or fostering. These manifestations, this is what I'm interested to read in particular. These manifestations of love and of families may not be typical, but they are as real as their traditional counterparts. Such atypical manifestations of the family unit are equally deserving, not only of protection under law, but also of the benefits available under social welfare legislation. The black letter of the law must not be relied upon to disadvantage families, which are different from traditional ones. The same undoubtedly holds true for women, who take on the role of motherhood in ways that may not find a place. Well, these six lines in the preceding in particular sum up well, the Article 14 aspect which I am making separately. Atypical does not mean well, the atypical application of the law. And, and today, well, when your lordship has crossed the threshold of even substantive due process, we are today being told that your Lordship as well as doing something mm, very, 
Bangladesh Partnership embarks on this. This co completes my first fellows and the most important pillar, non-discriminatory equal treatment. Second is fellows, freedom of expression. Freedom of expression, fellows, I had the privilege of arguing Naveen Jindal. I remember fellows, Justice Khare carried it from court 6 to court 1. That matter with him. Kept on getting adjourned, the government of India was, and Mr. Ajur Ramchandran <laughs> was the ASG at that time. Uh, a matter against his heart and instinct, I believe. <laughs> but anyway, he did his duty with us. So, Naveen Jindal later became my client because he defended <laughs> against me. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, there, people tend to forget the right to fly the flag. Well, as we gave submissions, the SEC has published those submissions. 191A expression. But there's one part of that, fellas, is that that speech, 191A, extends to, quote unquote, socially valuable participation in socially valuable forms of expression that are articulated in community. That's the facet I'm underlining only, fellas, for your lordship's consideration. That's in Naveen Jindal, para 90, 90. And well, the socially valuable forms of expression articulated in community, the participation within which is essential to be complete, is well, also applicable to this case of exclusion. I am not reading NALSA because it's been read, it's been referred. I put in my submissions. I am strictly avoiding it, well, but my point in one line here is freedom of expression includes the freedom or the right to express one's gender identity in all its manifestations. That's the, well, it's my proposition as far as this topic is concerned. Now, Malibs, if you are in 19-1A, and I'll it's a straight point of 19A. We don't need to well, spend time on 19A. This phrase is sufficient. These two phrases, well, participation in socially valuable forms of expression in the community and freedom of expression includes the freedom to express one's gender identity. These are the two principles. The question arises under what part of 192 can you touch it? Which 192 have you shown to the court? That's the more important well, aspect. It can't be, it is not. There is no reference point to any facet of 19.2 which there cannot be. You can stretch well as decency and morality. You can stretch decency and morality. Down on 192, there is no law which is a reasonable restriction. No, none, none. 14, 14, yes, 14, 15, whatever. But the silence of a law to be construed as an ex. I, I am very grateful. That's the second aspect. Today, your lordships has got. Well, first, let us forget the silence of the law. First point is if a law was made, I am now going very much further against me than I need to go. Which part of 192 can it be relatable to when the core values of the constitutional law is already discussing? Then they are into, into, into an academic, academic question, correct? But well, decency and morality, you cannot stretch anywhere near to this. Your lot is talking of constitutional morality if and all the other. Talking of, Number two. No, if that's a hypothetical situation. That I leave, take a law and exclude today. You may test it later on no, if it may. Otherwise, today is a default argument. Now, you have not made it, you have not ex included it in there. Therefore, you read it in this. No, but I'm only saying something else. I'm saying, I'm saying hypothetically only. I'm saying only hypothetically. My Lord but is right. I'm saying hypothetically, the very text of 19.2 doesn't make it easy to think of a law which can be made. But I understand it's only hypothetical. It's it's an hypothetical argument made to show the contrast. Second, it is much worse because I'm sorry.
Now, well, it's the third and the last prong before I come to the very interesting interpretation part is the dignity point, which your Lordship is well aware, Article 21. I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot. I'm, I'm very sorry before I leave that. Well, it's this last part. This is actually the intersection. Main is Article 14 and 15, 16. This last point is an intersection of 14 with 191A. The right to express one's gender, gender identity is being questioned by the state, of course, without a law under 192, questioned on the ground that what right heterosexual couples have to project that identity, non heterosexual couples do not have. So it's an intersection of 14 and 191A. The projection of the gender identity, which is a part of free speech, free expression, is inhibited by your stand, which allows that right unfettered in your heterosexual category. And Malus, if they can't do it for a heterosexual couple, because your lots will undoubtedly hold it to be unreasonable restriction, then how is it a reasonable restriction for me? No, I'm saying the silence is being read as a restriction. I'm, I'm saying what is no 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 I'm, I'm saying the silence is read in the counter and the stand of the government is a restriction. That's the meaning. Is, I, I, I understand. I, I'm saying it's impliedly there. It's you have to read it there. It's not so much a statutory silence as much as the failure of to allow, the they'll not to allow it. to enact a law. Well, it's more than failure to enact, they will not recognize. I'm not going to go in the market with the label of marriage only. If I do anything on the basis of that marriage, who's going to recognize it, Malus? In argument. No, no, that is the right part. I'm saying, Malus, their restriction. Third pillar is dignity. That is what is very clear based on Article 21 as a third pillar or third facet. And what is there? Everyone with equal concern and respect is the core of that dignity. If you were to tell us Sorry, I just missed the point. I just missed the point. Sorry. No, I'm saying the third pillar. We're done with this. Part of it. The last one is, well, of course, the intersection. Of course, 14 is vital in the intersection. And well, to what Justice Kohli also said, after Justice Bhatt, well, 
lack of recognition is actually a full restriction. De facto, de jure. Now, let's come into the third pillar, dignity. Dignity, well, is Article 21, obviously, resides there. And your Lordship has put it, well, differently, but the best, simplest way of putting it is to treat everyone with equal concern and respect. And not to send a message that any individual is less worth because of their ascriptive characteristics. That any group is less worth because of their ascriptive characteristics. And with it comes the ability to participate on an equal footing in social malus, values or constructs. That also is a part of dignity. That's the entirety of dignity part. I only want to read one para as I leave dignity and come to the very important interpretation part. Just one para 40 of my written submissions. That is at page. Page. 438. I am very grateful. 39. I'll read 39 and 40. Well, I should permit me. Does my Lord Jesus call Justice? Chief Justice has got it. Yes. The central importance of marriage as a social institution, as outlined above, means that the ability to participate in it on equal terms is a question of dignity. When the state excludes a set of people from participation in a valuable social institution, by comparing their choice with the state, proscribing what it considers noxious business activities, it communicates both to the excluded and to the rest of society that these individuals are less than complete members of society. It is therefore a message of subordination. I am very grateful, Malus. My Lord directed me and Malus gave me an opportunity. 40. Now, this is Malus by way of analogy. This is not the case we are in. Just very quickly go through 40. It gives your option 3 or 4. Your Lordship, juristic analogies. There are many historical instances of the exclusion of a group of people from a social institution being used to send a public message about their worth as equal moral members of society. These, for example, include caste-based restrictions on temple entry, exclusion. Very well-known case, Malus, Venkaramana Devaru. Rules that prohibited women from participating in male professions. My Lord has already read it, so I'm leaving it. Anuj Garg. The refusal to accommodate disability in public examinations, I'm leaving it, Vikas Kumar. That's also by my Lord Justice Chandachur and many others. Over time, laws and the judgments of this court have removed these exclusions on the understanding that the ability to participate in the making and remaking of social institutions is central to individual dignity. The exclusion of LGTB, etc., from the social institution of marriage is one of the last remaining legal outposts that sanctions such exclusion. And therefore, Malus, it would advance the constitutional goal. This completes the three constitutional pillars and the Malus ascriptive test. I now come to Malus something very interesting where in Malad's different contexts, in three judgments, in the Malad's House of Lords in the UK Supreme Court, one of the two, two judgments was very beautifully put. The issue arose, of course, it arose in the rent act in one case and some landlord relationship in the other, that Parliament A did not intend it, or the text is a limitation, or the intent is a limitation, and how should we as a court read it? But fortunately, it arose, how should the court read it as a treaty-compliant legislation, not merely interpretation. In that, Malus, I'll read first one case, then Malus, a very, very well-written article, and then two, the other two cases. That's, Malus, going to be, I, I believe, Malus, very profitable and repay study. First, turn to the House of Lords, Malus, in a case called Gedan. Now, this is in Volume 4, which is Foreign Judgments. And no, no, no. this interpretation part of it, you haven't uh, dealt in your written submissions, no? 
which one no i have i've not called it interpretation no, no, no. i've called it remedies yeah. but it's well your lordship will not understand it quite clearly unless i read the judgment all right i'll come back to it but my lord is right it is fully there under the heading remedies, uh, b b remedies. but minus that brilliant article malus which i have right. not been able to i've got it ready in hand for giving a copy but malus it's yeah. not in the 277 277 yes market. yes in one one malus constant this is very important yeah. may i may i summarize it constitutional compliant interpretation of a statute oblique treaty compliant because your lordship is dealing with treaty case oblique treaty compliant which is their constitution because the treaty is their constitution constitution compliant interpretation oblique treaty compliant interpretation of a statute is not limited by the statutory text or the legislative intent but in a dynamic evolving context only the word only is important only by underlying thrust of the legislation and by institutional capacity of the court and institutional capacity is explained by us This is one one three eight thirty two. Hold on. I start with Ghedan Malus, which is para thirty two at one one three six of your Lordship's PDF of Volume Four, which is Foreign Judgments. Para thirty two. Give me one page. One one four six. I'm sorry, I gave the wrong page. But what is third? Just write down. What page? One one four six of Foreign Judgments, Volume Four. Yes. What para are you referring? Thirty two. One one four six. PDF. 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 Para thirty two. Parent friend says it is one one four six para thirty two. Is one one four six is actually physical one one three eight. Three eight. Uh, physical one. Yeah, one that's three. a population one. Married. Yes. From this, the conclusion which seems inescapable is that the mere fact that the language under consideration is inconsistent with the convention compliant meaning. does not of itself make a convention compliant interpretation under 3 impossible section 3 enables language to be interpreted restrictively or expansively but section 3 goes further than this take out the page where section 3 is quoted take it out it is also apt to require a court to read in words which change the meaning of the enacted legislation to make it convention compliant will my lord underline that was a lot of because that sentence in other words the intention of parliament in enacting section 3 was to an extent bounded only by what is possible a court can modify the meaning and hence the effect of primary and secondary legislation but well, i studied in england i could not imagine these words coming from an english court fellows parliament however cannot have intended that in the discharge of this extended interpretive function the court should adopt a meaning inconsistent with a fundamental feature of legislation that would be to cross the constitutional boundary under section 3 a boundary section 3 seeks to demarcate and preserve so well it's nicely balanced 
Parliament has retained the right to enact legislation in terms which are not convention compliant. The meaning imported by application of Section 3 must be compatible with the underlying thrust of the legislation being construed. Words implied must in the phrase of my noble and learned friend Lord Roger go with the grain of the legislation. Nor can Parliament have intended that Section 3 should require courts to make decisions for which they were not equipped. There, were very, there are several ways of making a provision convention compliant and the choice may involve issues calling for legislative deliberation. Now, let's kindly come to para 51. Whereas this was the Rent Act, children. the phrase was as his or her wife or husband. Now, this is very important. Let me let's just write down this sentence. Because it's a very important query. Which Lord is this? What was the context? Identical to us. The phrase under the Rent Act was, just kindly note the downloads. You should take my word for it. As his or her wife or husband. And the finding was that this phrase means as if they were his wife or husband. As if they were his wife or husband. That is the finding. In other words, they were not husband and wife, but we have to read it as if they were husband and wife. This is the para 35, you know, they yes. very interesting. That will give you the facts and how they mold the... Yes, may I, Melissa? Lord Stein is very important. Let me read 35 first. 35. In some cases, difficult problems may arise. No difficulty arises in the present case. Paragraph 2 of Schedule 1 of the Rent Act is unambiguous. But the social policy underlying the 1988 extension of security of tenure under Para 2 to the survivor of couples living together as husband and wife is equally applicable to the survivor of homosexual couples living together in a close and stable relationship. And this is a country doing a convention compliant interpretation with no constitutional history, hardly any constitutional jurisprudence and legacy. In this circumstance, I see no reason to doubt that application of Section 3 to Para 2 has the effect that Para 2 should be read and given effect to as though the survivor of such a homosexual couple were the surviving spouse of the original tenant. That's how they read it. Reading Para 2 in this way would have the result that cohabiting heterosexual couples and cohabiting heterosexual couples would be treated alike, would uh, alike for the purposes of succession as a statutory tenant. This would eliminate the discriminatory effect of Para 2 and would do so consistently with the social policy underlying Para 2. Well, it's without Article 14. Without Article 14. Now, well, just read on. There's something more. Well, I've, I've not finished. This is a very interesting case. And the article is even more interesting. Well, how far is it? Now, just turn to Lord Stein, well, mm -hmm. who's the next Para. He, of course, the summary is better to see first. Para 51 which is at page 1152. Nothing else. But nothing else. I now return, may I, it's at 1152, my Lord has got, the got conclusion it. of Lord Stein. You got that. I now turn to the circumstances of the case before this house. Applying Section 3, the Court of Appeal interpreted as his or her wife or husband in the statute to mean as if they were his wife or husband. While there has been some controversy about aspects of the reasoning of the Court of Appeal, I would endorse the reasoning on the use of Section 3.1. It was well within the power under this provision. But Balads, possibly the best way of putting it was Lady Hale Balads which is at 1177, the first well, it's woman Chief Justice, not, not right way to describe her, it's of UK. President. Uh, President of the of the, of the the UK Supreme Court. Which page is it? 1177. Well, it's 1177, para 7, 7. 130. 130. Para as well as 130. 
I believe it's 1177. Same volume, little ahead. Baroness Hill of Richmond. Well, she has put it on a wider one, but I will read Willis Samparas on a wider basis, but also this basis. Yeah. And rather well put. You sure you've not left out any? Yes, no, 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 it is, may I read Willis? Yes. It is not so very long ago in this country that people might be refused access to a so called public bar because of their sex or color of their skin, that a woman might automatically be paid three quarters of a man what, what a man was paid for doing exactly the same job, that a landlady offering rooms to let might lawfully put a no blacks notice in her window. We must now realize that this was wrong. It was wrong because the sex or color of the person was simply irrelevant to the choice which was being made, to whether he or she would be a fit and proper person to have a drink with others in the bar, to how well she might do the job, to how good a tenant or lodger he might be. It was wrong because it depended on stereotypical assumptions about what a woman or a black person might be like. Assumptions which had nothing to do with the qualities of the individual involved. Ascriptive. Ascriptive. Even if there were any reason to believe that more women than men had bad customers, this was no justification for discriminating against all women. It was wrong because it was based on an irrelevant characteristic which the woman or the black did not choose and could do nothing about. Ascriptive. When this country legislated to ban both race and sex discrimination, there were more than we have here a Hindu prime minister and a Muslim Malas first secretary in the north of that country. First minister. First minister, first minister which is the equivalent of the prime minister within the sovereign system. When this country legislated to ban both race and sex discrimination, there were some who thought such matters trivial, but of course they were not trivial to the per 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 people concerned. Still less trivial are the rights and freedoms set out in the European Convention. The state's duty under Article 14, now this is interesting, that number is the same, to secure that those rights and freedoms are enjoyed without discrimination based on such suspect grounds is fundamental to the scheme of the Convention as a whole. It would be a poor human rights instrument indeed if it obliged the state to respect the homes or private lives of one group of people, but not the homes or private lives of another. Such a guarantee of equal treatment is also essential to democracy. Democracy is founded on the principle that each individual has equal value. Treating some as automatically having less value than others not only causes pain and distress to that person, but also violates his or her dignity as a human being. The essence of the convention, as has been said often, is respect for human dignity and human freedom. See so and so. Second, second, such treatment is damaging to society as a whole. Wrongly to assume that some people have talent and others do not is a huge waste of human resources. It also damages social cohesion, creating not only an underclass, but an underclass with a rational grievance. Third, it is the reverse of the national behavior we now expect of government and the state. Power must not be exercised arbitrarily. If distinctions are to be drawn, particularly upon a group basis, it is important. It is an important discipline to look for, look for a rational basis for those distinctions. Classification, nexus, object. Finally, it is a purpose to all human rights instruments to secure the protection of the essential rights of members of minority groups, even where they are unpopular with the majority. Minority includes well, minority in different ways on ascriptive characteristics. Democracy values everyone equally, even if the majority does not. Then, Malas, para 137. I hope you have not missed out anything there. I think you may read 135 also. 135. May I read it? I'm grateful. It is common ground that one of the convention rights is engaged here. Everyone has the right to respect for their home. This does not mean that the state or anyone else has to supply everyone with a home. Nor does it mean that the state has to grant everyone a secure right to live in their home. But if it does grant that right to some, it must not withhold it from others in the same or an analogous situation. This is, well as the heart of equality. There's no positive obligation that says, I must give you a house. It must grant that right equally unless the difference in treatment can be objectively justified. You're granting marriage to heterosexual couples. Give me a rational reason to deny it to this side of the table. 
there is no need for us to express a view on the degree which a constitutional right must be engaged in order to bring Article 14 into play on any view that threshold is crossed here. It is also common that there is a difference in treatment in respect of that right between the respondent and the survivor of an opposite sex relationship. It is also common ground that sexual orientation is one of the grounds covered by Article 14 on which like sex and race, a difference in treatment is particularly suspect. Well, this is that uh, facially suspect, which a lot of said. Yes. Facially, well, yes. For the reason given earlier, the grounds put forward to justify it require careful scrutiny. Now, 137. The parties differ on whether the survivors of an unmarried heterosexual and homosexual couples, so he's dealing with unmarried and well as homosexual couples both, are indeed in an analogous situation and therefore on whether the basis of the difference in treatment is sexual orientation or something else. Impossible <laughs> to see what else the difference can be based on. Impossible to see what else the difference can be based on except sexual dis uh, orientation. Everything which has been suggested to make a difference between the appellant and the other surviving partners comes down to the fact that he was of the same sex as the deceased tenant. It is the decisive factor. Then, well, it's uh, 38. In fact, I'll also read. We are not here concerned with the difference in treatment between married and unmarried couples. The European Commission accepts, etc. May I, Melus, come? If I don't miss out something relevant, Melus, 142, I think, will suffice. Well, let's just see 141, the first few lines, not the whole. 141, a few lines. The relevant difference which has been urged upon us is that a heterosexual couple may have children, whereas a homosexual couple cannot. But this too cannot be a relevant difference in determining whether a relationship can be considered marriage-like for the purpose of rent act. First, the capacity to bear or beget children has never been a prerequisite for a marriage in English law. It's a very interesting history, Melis. Henry VIII a very infamous ruler with six wives, Willis, would not otherwise have had the problems he did. Not together. Huh? No, no, but Willis, no, no, what she's saying is Willis, that sequentially, only because of lack of children. Right. And Willis, in his case, so, lack, lack of, of an heir. Lack of an heir. And in his case, Willis, lack of an heir meant sometimes execution Gilded. of the lady. Oh. That's how, Willis, this is called, this is, she's referring to sequential. Willis. She put it rather, Willis, uh, in the typical English understatement, Henry VIII would not otherwise have had the problems he had. <coughs> it's an under, put it very nicely, Willis. Even the capacity to consummate the marriage only matters if one of the parties thinks it matters. If they are both content, the marriage is valid. A marriage, let alone a relationship analogous to marriage, can exist without either the presence or the possibility of children from that relationship. Secondly, however, the presence of children is a relevant factor in deciding whether a relationship is marriage-like. But if the couple are bringing up children together, it is unlikely to matter whether or not they are biological children of both parties. Both married and unmarried couples, both homosexual and heterosexual. I'm sorry. Both married and unmarried, both homosexual and heterosexual will bring up children together. One or both may have children from another relationship. This is not at all uncommon in lesbian relationships and the court may grant them a shared residence order so that they may share parental responsibility. A lesbian couple may have children by donor insemination who are brought up as children to them both. It is not uncommon for each of them to bear a child in this way. A gay or lesbian couple may foster other people's children. When the relevant section of the Adoption Act of 2002 are brought into force, they'll be able to adopt. This means they will indeed have a child together in the eyes of law. However, thirdly, however, there is thirdly, however, there is absolutely no reason to think that protection given by the Rent Act to the surviving partner's home was given for the sake of couple's children. Statutes usually make it plain if they wish to protect minor children. These days, the succession is likely to take place after any children have grown up and left home. Children, whether adult or minor, who are still living in the home may succeed as members of the family under so-and-so of the schedule. It is a long-standing social and economic interdependence, which may or may not be the product of having brought up children together, that qualifies for the protection of the Act. In the days when the tenant was likely to be a man with a dependent wife, it was understandable that preference was given to the widow over anyone else in the family. But in 1980, that preference extended to widowers, whether or not they were dependent upon the deceased wife. Dr. Singhvi, we have a similar case, except that it's not same sex. Here was a case where in the absence, marriage was not essential, person was living with the original tenant. Yeah. The yes. tenant died. Yes. So the the live-in, whoever was a partner. Thank you, you're not married. Not married. 
So therefore, that protection was sought to be taken away. This More importantly, how would you read the act, which which might violate the your judgment by Justice Lahoti within the, before the domestic, uh, you know, violence. Yes. Act, I'll, I'll have where they were, where that. the parties got estranged. I'll, I'll cite that tomorrow. I'll let it. So, and and uh, uh, husband, he actually intentionally walked away, and then the wife faced uh, eviction. Eviction. So the court granted that protection. Now see what is the next para. I'll, I'll place that. I'll place that. Just see the next para. Now 142 onwards is where I particularly wanted to read. Homosexual couples can have exactly the same sort of interdependent couple relationship as heterosexuals can. Sexual orientation defines the sort of person with whom one wishes to have sexual relations. It requires another person to express itself. Some people, whether heterosexual or homosexual, may be satisfied with casual or transient relationship. Now, this is another important facet I forgot to mention was casual or transient relationships. It is to avoid them that marriage is an important uh, uh, aim or object of some people. It requires another person to express. But most human beings eventually want more than that. They want love. I started the case arguing today with that one. It's the right to love, person of your choice. And with love, they often want not only the warmth, but also a sense of belonging to one another, which is the essence of being a couple. And many couples also want to come to stability and permanence, which go with sharing a home and a life together, with or without the children, who for many people go on to make a family. It is, sorry, in this people of homosexual orientation are no different from people of heterosexual orientation. It follows that a homosexual couple whose relationship is marriage-like, look at that word, Manus, Marriage-like, in the same way that an unmarried heterosexual couple's relationship is marriage-like, are indeed in an analogous situation. Unless I can continue. This is something more here, so I'll continue tomorrow. Unless in this, this para, 143. Well, I'll be as fast. I'm not repeating anything. I just the reading time will take some. I'll be as fast as possible. I've taken the cue from Justice Calls Common. I will not take time. I'm not take time. I'll do it. If your lordship would well, permit me, I can do it virtually, but otherwise I'll be here physically. Whichever way your lordship would say it. Very well.